for YouTube. Oh, perfect timing. Just getting ready to sign on. And you. Mm -hmm. Just got my big heaping cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. I'm cooking with gas now. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to our 100th episode. The reason why we haven't played our music at the first is... I'm going to leave this to Mr. Paul at the moment. Paul, take it away. <laughs> take it away. <laughs> okay, well, the reason we haven't done it is because we've had a lot of people say, where did, you know, where did you get that, that theme you know, that you play every week? Where did that come from? Well, what we're going to do is I'm going to play it for you Let's and give it out for you. And then you'll know where it came from. So I'm going to uh, see if I can't pull this off, make this happen. Make it happen, number one. All right, let's see if I can share that. And here's a little bit of how we start our show. So if, if you're not familiar with that, that little chrome dome that's on the top, I always wear my baseball hat. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, uh, that's me playing on that. That's, uh, I play drums, and uh, there's a, a tutorial video I use from a guy named Tommy Igo, and this is one of the tracks, and I'm, that was me playing along with it. So that's where we got the, the theme for the, uh, the Sunday Night Astronomy show. <laughs> yes, sir. Have you ever wondered? <laughs> Now you know the now rest you know. of the story. Now you know the look, rest of the story. You look so serious. <laughs> you do, yeah. <laughs> Way too serious. You know what? That was actually on a Christmas morning, and I was just trying out a new symbol. Awesome. <laughs> <That's> cool. <laughs> and it works well. Okay, works so well. good evening, everybody, and welcome to our 100th episode. Yay! Yay! And a special wait. extended edition of the Sunday Night Astronomy Show. Uh, my yeah. name is Chris Kerwin of Astronomy by the Bay, and, uh, and first one, welcome. Yeah, and you're not. <laughs> welcome back, our first regular co-host, uh, Mr. Paul Owen from the Moonshot Observatory in Hampton, New Brunswick. Hey, Paul. Hello. And Mr. Mike Powell from the PFO Observatory here in St. John. Yeah. Even. And also, we have Mr. Tim Doucette here from Quinnan, Nova Scotia, the dark skies of Quinnan. And we have Mr. Emil Cormier, our first guest this evening. So we're going to get to that in just a second or two. Um, so you noticed our special intro to the program tonight. Uh, some of you wondered where the music came from, and that's Mr. Our Mr. Owen here that uh, contributed that to our show. So uh, thanks very much for that, Paul. We really appreciate that. It's a nice little jingle. Everybody likes it. So now on to tonight's program. Okay, we've got a very busy show for you here tonight. Um, we'll be drifting away from our usual format, of course. Uh, we invited all of our previous guests and a few others that have supported our program uh, along the way to join us tonight so that we might uh, chat with each one of them and uh, catch up and see what, what's going on in their lives and what they're up to now in, in the astronomy world. Uh, and to thank them as well, of course, for their contributions to our program. So also tonight, we're going to have a number of prizes to give away. Um, each of our guests are going to draw for one prize. So this is over a two-hour period. Uh, we've got 11 guests coming on. Everybody has five to ten minutes or so for a talk. So uh, that's going to take us into about two hours. But the last of the prizes don't get drawn until the very end. So <laughs> hope we stay tuned. <laughs> Anyway, um, these prizes are to thank all of you for uh, who have become top fans of my Facebook page. So I went down through the list of my uh, Facebook uh, page uh, likes, and uh, there was uh, quite a number of top fans. Those are the people who interact a lot with my page, so you comment or like or share uh, the post, and that all, that all helps uh, grow the page and grow our, our format here today. So really appreciate that. So that's, uh, that's a, a, well, a thank you to all of you for that. Um, now, uh, also tonight, we hope to have a look back at how we progressed over the show over the past couple of years. <laughs> it's been a little uh, little rough along the way. Um, and if you've tuned in frequently, you might have seen the odd blooper or two. Uh, so we might have a few minutes of uh, bloopers here to 
to show as well tonight. And also we've got some photos, uh, some memories of some photos to share tonight as well. So so let's get started uh, tonight. Just sit back, relax, and uh, grab yourself a favorite beverage and snack, and uh, we'll get started with tonight's program. Welcome, everybody, on Facebook. Welcome, everybody, on YouTube. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, we're going to get started right away with our first guest, Mr. Emil Cormier. So, um Emil now, he lives in Baktouche and has been a member of Rask NB for several years now. He uh, also looks after maintaining the Rask NB website and is the administrator of the Moncton Astronomy Facebook pages. Uh, Emil has recently completed his own observatory and is working on another project, uh, which we'll probably discuss tonight, I believe. Uh, he was also in, very instrumental in getting us up and running here on, on, the, on the program um, when we were having many issues at the very beginning. Uh, we still have issues along the way, but <laughs> he brought us through the biggest part of them. <laughs> um, and Emil has joined us uh, on a couple of episodes, too. He's joined us in a couple of episodes to offer live views through his equipment and to offer a uh, talk on the craft of sketching objects. Uh, so welcome, Emil. Good evening. And great to have you here. Um, so yeah. let's get caught up on what's going on. And you've got a special um, project I think you're going to show us. Yes. Uh, I recently uh, completed a couple of uh, observing certificate programs mm -hmm. from the uh, RASC, the uh, finest NGC objects, as well as the deep sky gems. Awesome. I was working on both uh, concur concurrently. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. Um, when COVID hit uh, and we uh, no longer did any public outreach, uh, I had more time to devote to that sort of thing. and. Uh, so I, uh, I got it. I got those uh, programs done. For, uh, for anybody uh, getting into astronomy, um, I really encourage that you uh, consider undertaking uh, these sorts of observing programs. Even if you're not a member of the RAS, you can just download the lists and just do them on your own anyway. Um, I find it gives uh, goals and structures um, to do. Um, instead of just randomly looking at various objects. Um, uh, and I encourage you to try to do them manually, even if you do have a go-to telescope, nothing prevents you from using the hand controller and just manually finding the objects yourself. Um, I think of that as a treasure hunt. And when you finally find the object, uh, it's your reward. So, um, I very much encourage everyone to at least try to undertake a few uh, observing programs. Thank you. Yeah, good idea. And um, I've, this year, I've, most of my uh, astronomy energy has been spent designing a uh, Dobsonian telescope that I intend to build as soon as I receive my uh, primary mirror that will be made by uh, Norman Fulham out of Quebec. Um, I've designed uh, mine completely in CAD, um, and I'll sh go ahead and share what I have. Okay. Are you getting that? Yes, we are. Thank you. Yeah. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's uh, derived a bit from the uh, Krieg-style uh, Dobsonian. Uh, David Krieg is the founder of Obsession Telescope. Uh, they've been going on for a long while now. Um, so a lot of these traditional wooden-looking telescopes are, are basically based on, on his design. So it's based a bit on, on his, but I took uh, ideas that I found on astronomy forums and incorporated them. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it. Most, I think most don't usually design them in CAD. Uh, you don't have to design it in CAD. You don't need to be a mechanical engineer. Uh, you can just go ahead and build one. And uh, what you end up having to do is to shorten and trim stuff to uh, adjust to the focal length of the mirror you end up having. And this is a 20 inch, right? Emil? Yes, yeah. yes, I forgot to mention. This is a 20 inch. Uh, <laughs> it's the largest mirror uh, that I can afford. Mm -hmm. uh, 
plus uh, it, the eyepiece when it's uh, pointed vertical, and I, I can actually simulate that here. Oh, and I went. Uh, I How fast is that mirror? Uh, oh, there we go. It's an F three point three. Yeah. <laughs> very That's... fast. Very fast mirror because it's going to have critical collimation. So when it's pointed at zenith here, well, you'll never have it totally uh, at zenith, maybe more like, I don't know, 80 degrees. Uh, so that the height of the eyepiece, that's pretty much my uh, the height of my eyeball. That's awesome. So that's the largest telescope I can get away with without needing a ladder. No ladder. That's mm -hmm. ideal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I've... I've already borrowed a telescope once that required the use of a ladder, and uh, it's not for me. Uh, yeah. I find it quite tiring. Absolutely. Yep. Agreed. Even so a chair. The, uh, even a chair yeah. is rather to drag around the telescope. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So what the CAD allowed me to do is to actually determine what that height is going to be, and let the optician know uh, what focal uh, ratio that I want my mirror at. Okay. Uh, F3.3 happens to be a popular focal ratio for 20-inch mirrors right now, so oh, uh, that cool. ended up working okay for me. Um, it also allowed me to determine things like... Uh, so it's made out of wood, but I need some of these sides transparent so I can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, it allowed me to determine the depth of this box here, the mirror box, uh, so I can get the, that's the mirror box and this is the rocker box. And with CAD, I was able to determine what's the depth of the rocker box that, so that the mirror box barely avoids scraping it. Mm -hmm. and the idea is to get, minimize the height of the eyepiece. Right. Because every, right. when you're close to not needing a ladder, every hinge counts. Right. <laughs> So um, that was a, another useful aspect of having it drawn out in CAD. Plus, uh, I'm not an experienced uh, woodworker, so um, being able to virtually cut everything and see how it fits beforehand is, is useful. That's awesome. I, I, yep. love the, I love the rocker box design better than, like I've got the 12-inch here, but it's got the, the, uh, the side uh, pieces on it. It, does, it just doesn't float as well. This will be easy to balance, though, too, will it not? Yes, so this yeah. is um, a Trunnion-based design. Mm. I, I think it's Krieg who pioneered that. Uh, they used to have full circles. Yeah, so John Dobson had full circles in mm -hmm. his design. Dobson is, uh, who, uh, is the person whose um, the telescope design is named after. Um, he had full circles in his design, but Krieg went and said, well, you don't need the full circle. Uh, he went and made them into half circles. And on, on some designs now, they even get rid of this cross piece here, and you just have the uh, these arcs. But um, I, I left those in so I can um, attach a uh, altitude encoder. Uh, I plan on having this be um, a go-to uh, telescope. Wow, nice. Awesome. So what yeah, so that's, that's what I've been working on this past year in my spare time. Mm. The focal length is, uh, I have that calculated. Uh, oh, it's um, around 1600 millimeters, I think. Oh, okay. wow. Nice. It's, it's about the same focal length as uh, the 14 inch I have now. It's just that the mirror is much faster. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, nice bright objects, I bet. That'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be spoiled. <laughs> uh, the oh, the hard ahead. part is going to have it is going to build it though. So go ahead, spoil What's yourself. That? You deserve it. Well, yeah. you know, some yeah. middle-aged guys they buy motorcycles, and well, this is my motorcycle. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can justify almost anything, Emil, if we want to, right? That's yeah. not why I bought my Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll never get a ticket for driving it. Yeah. <laughs> nope. So are you going to build it yourself? Or are you going to have someone, uh, a, a carpenter, uh, work with you on it? Or how do you? Um, no, I'm going to build it myself. I'm going to try anyway. Awesome. Um, the mirror, though, is going to be 
uh, made by, uh, like I said, Fulham. Yeah, by Fulham. Yeah. So some people do actually grind their own mirrors, and I admire them, but I, I wouldn't have <laughs> the patience the to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, uh, at the focal ratio of f three point three, I mean, you really need an expert yeah, who knows yeah. what he's doing to to pull that off. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to look through it. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I yeah. I think uh, there's another person in New Brunswick who has a twenty inch daub. And I know another person who's building one. Oh, okay. So I think it'll be among the largest aperture telescopes in New Brunswick. Mm. I'd like to know if anybody has one larger. Uh, I don't think there's anything larger in the province. M13 through that is going to be just stunning. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm looking on your screen there, and I don't see the... Uh, the quantity and add to cart. I was trying to click that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me build this one first, and maybe uh, I'll see about uh, I'll, I'll tell making you what, more and selling them. Yeah, Tim, I tell you, <laughs> if you put your credit card online right now, I'm sure it would magically appear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, actually, all the time I spent designing this, if I value my time, I would have been better off just buying the structure. Oh. It, it, it has to be a labor of love if yeah. you build oh, this yeah. on your own. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You have yeah. a bunch of people with cats that would gladly have them walk across the keyboard and purchase that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, you know the satisfaction you're going to get from that when mm. that's actually built and you're getting first light with that, that's just, you, you'll, you'll never be able to replace that. Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. Oh, that's, that's the idea. I've seen the I've seen M13 through a 24 inch. Oh really? Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's yeah. insane. It would yeah. be, yeah, yeah. Oh, it'd be awesome. Um, and, and I mean, and only maybe in a spot like Mount Carrollton or <laughs> yeah. Emil taught yeah. me how to hold my hand out, and where he was he was looking at maps and uh, held his hand out, and I looked and I saw the shadow of his hand on the paper just from the Milky yeah. Way. <laughs> it's just the first yeah. time I ever saw that. It was just unbelievable. Yeah. So. Yeah, also, Emil is also responsible for my first time seeing um, NGC 7000 through his Mac with an O3 filter. Mm. And it's the first time I had a visual look at that. And that I, that's still, to me, probably one of the best things I've ever seen. Yeah. So thanks it's for watching it. It's, um, in catalogs, it's logged as a very bright object. The problem is it's really freaking wide. Um, yeah. You need um, a combination of decent aperture and wide field uh, to be able to see it. So um, a refractor or a short Newtonian with a coma corrector is with a O3 filter is the way to see it. Yeah. yeah. And dark skies, obviously. Yeah. yeah. That was through your Levy that we saw, David Levy that we saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Emil, uh, as you times. go along with the project, you're welcome to bring the, the project on the show with us and show us how you progress oh, yeah. through the through the project. We'd love to have you back on. Yeah. So. so now that the whole world has, has uh, seen uh, what I've promised to, to do, now i got to go and finish. <laughs> 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 no, you don't Oops. have to. I'm, I'm on the hook now. Yeah. Now we're all waiting. Yeah, we're all waiting for the, for the view through it. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, thank you so much, Emil. Um, and we want to thank you very much for everything that you did to uh, to help us out along the way. I just got to admit Kathy here for a second. She's on her cell phone. Um, uh, from the very beginning to, to uh, all of the help that you provided us along the way, uh, you know what you did, and we know uh, we appreciate every bit uh, very much. of it. Uh, it wouldn't, our, we wouldn't have had our show online live when we did if it wasn't for you along the way. So thank you very much for everything that you've done for us, and we hope to have you back on the show very uh, very soon again. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Emil. <clears throat> and we're going to move to our next guest right now, Mr. Tim Doucette. Looks like our time hey, is everyone. running right along smoothly. This is, Well, we're awesome. running smooth. I'm not going to speak up too much. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Did I let Emil the cat out of the bag? <laughs> oh, hang on. First of all, Emil has to make a draw. Oh, so, right. yeah, each, each guest each is going to make a draw. draw. So just have a reach in through the top here, Emil. <laughs> okay, you, got one? you get one there? Yeah. Okay, you got you one. Got All right, for the first draw, uh, and that's going to be for a uh, one year subscription to Sky News Magazine. Uh, the first winner is Susan Brown. Hey. Congratulations, Susan. Congratulations, Susan. 
So these are all top fan names and, and those who shared uh, the post about the show being on tonight. They're all in here in this nice little bucket here. So so congratulations, Susan. There's prize number one. Awesome. And thank you, Emil, for that as well. All right, well, let's move on to Tim. Uh, Tim, just I'm going to introduce him now. Uh, Tim is a former member of Rask and B. <clears throat> Joined us here quite a few times before. Uh, and now lives under the dark skies of Quinn in Nova Scotia. Uh, Tim is an avid amateur astronomer involved in something called astrotourism. Uh, Tim has developed an amazing night sky experience through his own observatory, Deep Sky, uh, the Deep Sky Eye Observatory, and uh, subsequent on-site accommodations that he offers. And uh, like my own son, Tim is legally blind, but that certainly hasn't slowed uh, down his passion for sharing the night sky with so many. Uh, Tim joined us back in July of 2020 to discuss his observatory setup, and again to discuss his concerns around light pollution with uh, Mr. Chris Wiedek that will be joining us later on. Uh, Tim's story is an inspiration to, for many of us, and uh, it's a pleasure to welcome him back to our program. Welcome, Tim. Thanks, Chris. It's really awesome to be here with you guys, and um, I just wish I had more time to be with you guys um, more often, because uh, we have such a good time every time we're we're online. Um, yeah, we do. <clears throat> you know, you guys have done an incredible job doing this uh, this program, and um, again, I wish I had time to to spend a lot doing, you know, helping you guys out more, but, uh, well, Trisha, I guess well, it's we'll twist your arm in the future. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, coming. <laughs> it's coming. So, so yeah, um, tell us what you've been up to. So there's been lots going on. Um, so in case you haven't, uh, um, so are you, am I full screen on this or is it just, uh, anyway, you can see my background. Uh, yeah. I can pin you. Yeah. There you, you go. You can see my background, uh, <laughs> kind of animated. Um, so I'm just going to let that play while we uh, while we chat. But um, so I do astrotourism. Um, I have my observatory set up. Uh, do a night sky experience. Since COVID, we've had to change things around. We've had uh, to do an outdoor only program instead of being in the observatory. So we set up a telescope outside as well. Um, people have with the telescope in the observatory. I've mounted up a. Uh, the experience is really cool because people bring their binoculars and with the telescope that I have, a Celestron 14-inch edge with a hyperstar running at f1.9, we can take pictures of different things in the sky, capture them live, and show them on a projector screen on the side of the building of the observatory. Everybody's sitting in recliner chairs and looking up at the night sky and looking at the screen. They take their binoculars. I've, I've set up a laser pointer on the telescope so that it shoots in the sky. They can follow the laser pointer and then see the with their binoculars what they would be looking at. So it turns out that, you know, it was really popular, you know, last year. And the biggest challenge, one of the challenges we had with visual observing was actually having, uh, being able to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, being able to get people to look through a telescope. Uh, last year, I you know, had people looking through a telescope, but I had to follow all the COVID protocols, cleaning the eyepiece every time, which destroyed the eyepiece. Of course, after a while, the coatings were gone. Um, so this Christmas, I jumped into the world of 3D printing and uh, built a 3D printed eyepiece cover um, with, you know, that has like a plastic shield on it so that people use these, they slide it over the eyepiece, uh, they look through the telescope, then they take it out and and to keep it with them that night. So it's kind of an extra layer of protection for people to be able to, you know, sit, kind of have that safety net of, you know, because uh, I'll be honest, we have some people that do get emotional. Um, and I'll be, you know, fairly blunt that, you know, we've had tears shed on the eyepiece for something that they've never seen before, mm -hmm. even if it's the rings of Saturn <clears throat> or if it's, you know, uh, whatever. And, you know, people remember that, but, you know, we have to be it safe and, and all that. So that helps. Uh, it helps a little bit. Uh, our accommodations went very, very well this year with the sky bubble tents. Uh, people, we've had so many good comments. We have three guest books full of comments that people just can't wait to come back. Uh, some people would come, you know, these are 16 foot inflatable domes uh, with uh, t a 10 feet, uh, 11 foot clear vinyl opening so it's a vinyl a clear vinyl um you know put a heater in those and a queen size bed and uh you know you're you're in heaven mm. <laughs> <laughs> um 
And, you know, some people come, you know, even when it's cloudy, you know, we had a cloudy summer, but, you know, people enjoyed it, whether it be a rainstorm, a thunderstorm, uh, you know, just feeling like you're outside and having privacy, uh, you know, being in a private, your own private bubble. So, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so that's this year. Uh, we're planning our plans for next year. We have a few things on our up our sleeve. Um, we're looking at maybe, uh, of course, we're looking at a bigger telescope for outdoors. Right. Um, the other thing that we had contemplated, which mm, probably is not going to happen next year, but we're actually talking about a planetarium. Oh, um, nice. So that, that's yeah. like yeah. something we're talking about to bring people in when it's cloudy. Um, so, you know, they come, they stay in the camping area, they have their fire outside. If it happens to be raining, we can't see the sky as well. We can still see something. So Awesome. Yeah, good idea. That's something we're looking at. Um, our committee, the Starlight Development Committee, has been super busy this year. We've had a number of things going on with that committee. Um, so as, as you may know, Southwest Nova has been... Um, Southwest Nova has been designated as the first Starlight Tourist Destination and Reserve in North America since 2014. Uh, we've increased astro tourism to our region by like 228% uh, since we started. Wow. We're wow. trying to create the industry as what we're trying to do. We're trying to get, uh, you know, other businesses involved. Some have jumped on board uh, with different things. So um, now the municipalities are now seeing that the value of astro tourism to our region and uh, we now have on another note we have light pollution uh, bylaws in place in argyle that's awesome which yeah. is very exciting and they're actually on the on the next level um they're actually looking to create a separate light pollution bylaw aside from the um uh, land use bylaw so that's really exciting that'll give sort of residents eventually like okay, you have one year to change your lights kind of thing. Um, so it'll be a, a really great uh, great thing for our region. The other thing is happening is the town of Yarmouth has jumped on board as well, finally. So that little glow that you kind of see in the western sky in some of my time-lapse photography is a little bit of a glow from Yarmouth, um, which has increased since 2014. Um, and uh, so they've jumped on board and they're looking at uh, trying to reduce light pollution in the town as well with laws and such. So we've been doing a lot of education. Um, you know, as a committee, we have a committee of about six or seven members. And, um, you know, we're working with those guys, uh, the different municipalities. We have Clare, Argyle and Yarmouth. Um, I was told actually uh, the municipality of Clare actually just bought a telescope, a Skywatcher telescope. Uh, to put in this, um, they have like a, a, a bird observatory that they use for, for bird watching along the shore. Okay. Um, so they're going to be putting a telescope in there as well um, for different people to be able to. There's one gentleman down here who does uh, night walks, uh, Paul Lalonde, and he does night walks, um, giving people, you know, a tour of the night sky as, as well as a tour in history at night. Mm -hmm. So he'll be able to use that telescope and show people stuff. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, it, it sounds awesome, Tim. Like the thing is, I mean, we are in a rural part of the country and why not take advantage of this? Like, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's a way to bring people into the area. Astrotourism has not been a big uh, thing in our area, but it's, it's a wonder why it hasn't been. Uh, we have it's, such it's absolutely true. Guys, yeah. In so many, like, I mean, you guys there in New Brunswick, like, I mean, we used to go out half an hour out of this, out of the, out of Moncton and we're like, you know, we had a dark sky there. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got Mount Carlton, you've got, the Funday Coast, like there's tons of stuff. Yep, um, we've we've recently, we're also partnered with um, Nova Scotia Power so that uh, we'll be helping to train their employees so that um, when somebody calls in the call center and says, hey, I need a, a street light in front of my house, um, they're going to be able to say, oh, you're in a dark sky area. We need you to, we need to install this particular lighting and this is how it has to be installed. Awesome. So yeah, we're helping them select yeah, the next generation of street lights too. That's Excellent. great. Great. You make you've made huge progress down there, and it's just a, oh, yeah. hopefully that'll start to flow out into us as well now uh, across the rest of the Maritimes because uh, we need it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So. Well, you've been a busy boy. Busy going on. <laughs> <laughs> you've been busy, uh, and yeah. uh, I'm sure you're going to have a great year next year as well, even with COVID. 
Uh, We've also actually started a trail. We're looking to create a planet walk trail that's a couple of kilometers in distance with panels and stuff for people to be able to walk the trail, um, you know, and show the planets and the in the appropriate distances between them and, and oh, all that kind yeah. of fun stuff. Yeah, that's, that'd be, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Fun uh, stuff. Yep. Uh, so, Tim, is, it's Deep Sky Eye Observatory, right, Tim? Yeah, Online. Deep Sky Eye Observatory. Yeah. So keep an eye info on him, folks, and uh, book something for next year. Because he's, yeah, he's going to well. What's that? Go to his website uh, and check it out. It's it's an amazing, you got to look at it. It's just yeah. an amazing place. It would be an amazing experience to attend. Yeah, we're, we're all looking forward to coming down to the big van someday. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, free, we'll bring... free admission. Free admission for those who bring their twenty-inch or larger scopes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> no, you guys are all welcome. I have a couple questions for Tim. Sure. Yeah. Um, if there are amateur astronomers who just want to use their site with their own telescopes, can you accommodate them? We can. Um, we we're not really set up for it yet, but we will be. So um, I generally say if there's amateur astronomers, especially members of RASC that want to come and visit, by all means, come on down. We'll we'll definitely uh, we'll make sure you have a place to to view the stars. Awesome. Another question is: uh, Do you do this full time now, or is it still a side thing? Um, well, yes, I do it full time. Um, I also still work full time. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> um, so you, yeah, I'm a, I'm a software engineer by, by, uh, by trade. So I work my 40 hour a week and, uh, this is sort of my still after hours, uh, job. So good for you. in the summertime, normally we'd be open all year round, but, um, this year we've had to close down actually, uh, early for a couple of reasons. Number one, we need a break, but number two, is I'm working on the automation part of the observatory and I hope to have a similar setup uh, with robotic telescope kind of uh, social media interface that uh, St. Mary's has by, uh, by next year. So a lot okay, of things. And I've got a last question. When do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's overrated anyway, isn't it, Tim? It is. I'm lucky my employer is uh, quite generous when it comes to that. I, if I sleep in until 9 or 10, it's not a big deal. There you go. <laughs> Just show him underneath the night sky. He can, he'll sleep in the next day as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Put him in a bubble. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. well, thank you so much, Tim, for that. Wow. Um, it's an uh, amazing project that you're into, and uh, please know that you're welcome to come back on the show at any time. We'd love to have you back uh, for another talk on, uh, on what you're doing down there. And let's get another, awesome. draw, another draw going. So okay, sure I'll get it your, draw. Yeah, reach your hand down in here in the jar. Just put your hand up by the webcam. I gotta make my hand bigger. Yeah, there, there we go. Okay. okay, got it. All right, I see it. I see your hand there. Okay, got. Okay, here we go. screen at this end. Okay, and this one's going to be for a book. Uh, this is for um, astronomy, the definitive guide. It's called, and uh, it's a great uh, plastic plasticized. I'll call it book. Uh, but great for outside, outdoor. Uh, it talks all about uh, galaxies, meteors, uh, the planets. Uh, it has nice uh, stargazing maps in it as well for the, for each season and for each area of the sky, northern, southern hemisphere. So a great, uh, I won't call it a pocket book, but it's just a little bit larger than that. But I've uh, had this edition. I think a few guys have had this edition. Uh, the, the Astronomy, the definitive guide. And the winner of that is going to be... You make a great banner. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Okay. Let me unpin Tim here, first of all. There, bring him back to normal size. Uh, the winner is Carol Crawley. Hey, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hey. Awesome. Okay, so I have to mention, too, that um, those who are getting books this evening, uh, the books uh, will have to be picked up in St. John, so whatever arrangements you can get to get the book out, out from St. John. Um, that's where they're all located. There are some subscriptions that I'll be giving away tonight, so they can be, of course, from anybody or anywhere. So, okay. So, there's prize number two. And thank you so much, Tim, for that. Um, You're welcome. Mike. We're going to go from there now to. Uh, I have a few. Like we've part of our show has been to bring photos on. Um, we've always asked for people to submit their photos. It's been a, a regular part of our program. 
it helps us to interact with the audience, but it helps us to follow you all along through the path. Because we saw a lot of people now that have submitted photos from the very beginning, and then to, to watch how they progressed up to this point. But also just to get people to submit photos to say, you know, um, here's here's a photo for you to show on the, on the show, and, and we love it. So I'm going to show a short clip here of some photos that have been submitted along the way. And right after that, we're going to be uh, introducing... Uh, Trudy Elman will be joining us. So let me get this uh, up and going here first of all. Just be a second. And I'll hopefully this will work. Doesn't always work first time, but we'll see. Oh, there it's going on the wrong screen. So let me bring that back. <laughs> of course. That's what we do. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, where's the music? <laughs> now, can we hear music here, first of all? Let me make sure that you can hear me. Can everybody see that? Okay? Yes. Okay, let's make sure we can hear. I'm going to put the audio mixer on an OBS so I can see if there's volume going out. Here we go. Okay. No music on that, though. No music. No music. Mm-mm. Well, it could oh. be that uh, YouTube hears the music, but yeah. we don't. Yeah. yeah, it's just amongst us, we don't hear it. I'll go back. And I was going to sing. <laughs> oh, that's a nice photo. <laughs> we could do that. Who took that one? <laughs> the Sophie Melanson. Wow. You can listen to it if you're tuned into Facebook or YouTube yourselves. Get the cat in there. There. Wow. 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 Nice. <laughs> wow. Some amazing captures yeah, wow. there. So, nice photos there. So they were just uh, some of the ones that were captured over the last uh, year or so. 
there's been so many, and uh, even at our last uh, Sunday Night Astronomy show, we had uh, 30 or so photos submitted. So we love every one of them, and we love getting them, and we love sharing your work with everybody else. So thank you so much for sending them in, and please continue to do that. We really, really uh, appreciate it. Well okay, uh, yeah. from there, we got to see if Trudy's ready. I'm not sure if Trudy's ready or not. She would be next up on the show. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> We wouldn't have any games uh, on talk, our show. Talk, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. <laughs> uh, she might be having connection problems too, so we'll just check to be sure. Well, you've got uh, Kathy right beside you. I do have Kathy right beside me. I'm here. <laughs> oh, there, and, and, and there goes Trudy. Uh, uh, look, here comes Trudy. She, <laughs> she changed her mind. Just like the Brady Bunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There All she is. Oh, uh, yeah. There's Trudy. Or Hi, Trudy. Laughing. There we go. Hello. 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 Happy uh, 100th. Thank you oh, very thank much. You. Just need a just second to get to my notes. I just want to let you know I, uh, I baked you a cake and it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> As it should have been. As it should be, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I had to. Do really, you need my friends with benefits? Yes. <laughs> there you go. I don't get the calories. All oh, that COVID. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, so thanks, Trudy. Uh, Trudy joins us actually from the dark skies of Fairfield. There you go. Hey, that's oh. not even. I'm not even going to say it. Fairfield, New Brunswick. Period. Yeah. <laughs> Your training is coming along wonderfully. It's coming along. <laughs> Uh, Trudy is a RASC member and the most dedicated follower and chair of our program. She shares our program all the time. We, we appreciate that, Trudy, very much. Also a good friend. Uh, Trudy a uh, started out in the hobby a few years ago and has excelled in her accomplishments, completing several of the RASC observing certificates and captured many astronomy photos with her equipment. Uh, she's also a dedicated volunteer for astronomy outreach. Uh, when we when we get back to astronomy outreach, <laughs> we have it, <laughs> and always willing to help out at any event. So I have welcome. to go do it by myself. <laughs> yeah, that's coming along. It will I get have to there. go sit on the picture table and go through the sky on my own because I'm going to forget it all if we don't get outreach back here soon. I know, it's <laughs> crazy. So, so what's been observing up, programs? Yeah, yeah. So well, yeah, I'm still plugging away at the explore the universe. Mm -hmm. Explore the universe. Um, exploring is fun. Getting it on paper, not so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and photos. Uh, lots of photos. Really had fun taking pictures of that aurora the other night, even though I couldn't see it. Right. You know, I stood there for two and a half hours snapping pictures just looking at the camera screen because the camera was getting it awesome. So. Yeah, they were amazing photos that you submitted there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your photography is oh. beautiful. Yeah. Your pictures are it great. Is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You get that sunrise, play rock, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I've, I've been given permission to go into a different location and uh, to get that sunrise from the other side of Split Rock. So, Oh, really? <laughs> Hopefully oh, you cool. might see that photo soon. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you're not going to see the split, but I should be able to light up the back of the Split Rock. So we'll see. Yeah. I haven't made it into the property yet to, to see it, but... Yeah. So, so, so Split Rock is a, is, is a favorite spot of yours for sure to take take photos, and and naturally it should be because it's such a beautiful spot to be able to capture the moon or sun or or uh, oh, anything else coming up. Through. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, 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 if you can get there just the right time, and well, especially if you need. Go ahead. Yeah, if you need that eastern sky, um, you know that's the place to be. Mm. It's just it's only seven minutes from my house, so. Yeah, yeah. Chasing wow. that zodiacal <laughs> light was fine, but you know, that was six days in a row. Yeah. For those who don't know, Trudy, could you tell them where about you are on the, on the map? I'm about 15 minutes out past the St. John Airport on the way to St. Martin's. So St. Martin's is about another 12 minutes past me. Yeah, and don't I'm give out your address on so the internet. Literally. Oh. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm literally. No, well, we're just we're just thinking about cookies and stuff. That's all. That's right. We're going out here for cake. What's that address again? <laughs> oh, there's no cake left. Sorry. No. No. <laughs> uh, so the bay is only about. There's two beaches about seven minutes from me. So I'm, uh, you know, lots of spots. And then I, I, oh, you haven't seen maybe the photos yet of the star trails. I have a lake. That I recently started taking photos on. So next week's show, maybe you'll see that photo. Yes, awesome. So it's yeah. a few spots around, <laughs> plus my own yard. Yeah. 
Those it's... Aurora photos were taken right here in my driveway. How long have you been into the hobby now, Trudy? <sighs> I believe we attended our first Astro nighttime photography course in, oh, I think it was the fall of 2016. 2016, five So that years, led yeah. to going to an astronomy meeting, mm -hmm. I think, in December of 2016. Mm -hmm. So... And you bought I your dog two I, years later? In was 27, it? Yeah, it was in 2018. I bought my dog. I was using the club scopes. I think I started out at the little four, mm. four half inch, whatever that one was, and went up to the six. I think I had the six and the eight here at the same time and then bought my my own eight inch. So, yeah. And that's a good thing about our local clubs, so, too, yeah. is that, uh, that you can borrow telescopes. <clears throat> Actually, can from Rask and B as well. Yeah. But we have loaner scopes yeah. for free that you can loan out. Uh, we loan out for a month at a time. And you try it out before you get it, you know, before you go buy. It's, it's a good way to try before you buy. And that's what Trudy did and oh. ended up going with the daub. So, yeah. And yeah. Love my eight inch daub. Yeah. They're, they're a great, uh, they're a great workhorse telescope. Um, and they, again, they force you to learn the night sky too. They're manual, completely manual, but it's not that hard. But in your sky, it may be a little bit harder because you see so many stars that it's harder to find the constellations. And <laughs> we've been down there a couple of times yeah, to have a look yeah. at the sky. It's just amazing down that way. Yeah. And, um, it is hard when, when you're on a new moon night and, you know, constellations that I know, I know I'm sitting there like, why can't I see this? <laughs> I'd almost so, say that they're even better okay. skies than St. Martin's. <laughs> no cookies well, I, for you. I said they're almost as good. <laughs> they're almost better. No, no cookies <laughs> for you. <laughs> We're going to be able to have an Astro Buddy Day here soon and no cookies for you. <laughs> That's just more for the rest of us. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> he put his foot in his mouth. <laughs> oh, I always do. So, so that space out there where you uh, are, for those who don't know a little bit about it, it's wonderful for doing the, the shots that you do out there. But also, if you just like to take shots of the beach, because uh, we're um, one of those places uh, that you shoot from is uh, a private beach. And... Um, yep. But when you actually go onto it and start walking down beyond some of those rock faces that you have to use as, as part of your landscape, boy, there's some beautiful, beautiful beach down there. And I had no oh, idea until a couple of weeks ago or however long, long ago we were out there. Mm. Yeah, I, I believe I described it to Chris as Paul was like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> After the sun <laughs> came up and we were all done, he was... <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. over the beach here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was quite funny. But I mean, and I kind of take it for granted because I go down all the time. I mean, that particular week, I think I was six or seven days in a row at 515 going down to first view the Zodiacalite and then waiting for a sunrise if it was doing what I wanted it to do. So I was mm. exhausted. You're <laughs> running around like you're on your 10th cup of coffee. Okay. <laughs> it's, a lot, yes. it's, a lot, it's a lot of work to get set up there. It's not, it's not an easy uh, approach. I mean, you've, you've walked a fair distance to, to actually get that spot where you're exactly where you need to be as well. So. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's in the low tide area that you need to go to line up that shot, and it's mm. not an easy walk. Um, I highly recommend. Trust me, the first time you do it without a flashlight doing a moonrise, and you try yeah. to come back in, yeah. Your cell phone flashlight just does not do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I've done that. I've had all my gear out, tides coming in, and it's like, oh my gosh, I have to walk. Yeah. <laughs> all the way back in with the cell phone flash. Yeah, that's it's not fun. <laughs> but yeah, there's a little planning. And that particular spot where Paul and I were up along the cliff, the, the water line comes up fairly close. You don't you don't have beach there at high tide. You so you've got to be careful. Yeah. Exactly. But it's a good spot. It's a good spot. And I'm lucky enough, my driveway, when you go stand on that, for those of you who have been here, where it's at the narrowest, where you can look down over into the brook, uh, it actually sh looks right up the valley at that northern sky. I had no idea when I did that, those uh, aurora photos that I had the North Polaris lined up in the upper center of my photo, because I had no concerns about Star Trail. I was only doing those photos for the light. I wanted as much light to get the aurora. Couldn't care if there were Star Trails. And then when I was playing with the photos, I said, oh, I'm going to stack a few of them. And there it was all lined up. I was like, oh, so oh. It like you couldn't be pointing more north. <laughs> oh, it, looked, it looked awesome. That, that shop, the Star Trails was amazing. It worked out yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. So. It comes such a long way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's funny when I see photos pop up in my memories or I'm going through photos to re-edit and thinking, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. can do that better. 
<laughs> for every hundred photos, you know, you know, might have got one before, but now for every hundred, you might get ten out of it. <laughs> so well, know. that's exactly. Thank I, God for digital cameras. Wow. I took over two hundred photos of that aurora and that the same green photo that night. Just even at two o'clock when I knew it was done, I was like, "No, nope, we're going to still take." But then I heard a really spooky noise in the brook, and that was it. I was like, okay, I'm going to the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of people, a lot of uh, animals out there like to enjoy the night sky with you. So that's, well, that can be interesting. That spot where I was is where the animals come up from the brook to go into our field. So if there's a lot of traffic there, I wasn't comfortable there, but I still spent two and a half hours there. <laughs> I had my big flashlight with me. I was okay. <laughs> Somebody was asking, can they see any of your, do you have a, a page where they can look at your photos? Uh, no, I don't actually. I, I don't post them online that much. Chris shows most of them. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Maybe I should. It's yeah, a thought. Well, um, just uh, Amber McNally was asking, and uh, maybe we can, a little, maybe a little later, post a picture or two of what you've done okay. um, of your uh, split rock shots, because they're absolutely stunning. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. I'll send some for Chris to share. Yeah, that'd be good. Somehow, yeah, on his page. Well, keep sending them in, yeah, absolutely. Yep. I get an opportunity to share them out. I love getting photos to share, so um, okay. again, yeah. Well, I want to. We want to thank you for um, all that you've done for our show along the way too. You've come on the show twice with us. Uh, you filled it in at the beginning and then part way through, and of course you've done so many shares for us. Uh, Shooty's the one that shares it to fifteen thousand <laughs> places. Like. Uh, yeah, uh, in the background, I'm looking at one or two shares, and I see this big pile from from a uh, tree. So she really. You know, yeah. So back to the '60s, it would be sunny and share. Share. Uh, oh, oh, oh! Uh, how I miss those two more after the meetings. Yeah. After meetings. <laughs> and those well, oh, thank you so much, okay. Trudy, for everything you do for us. We really oh, appreciate thanks, it, and uh, in the future as well, of course. But we're going to get you to draw another prize for us here. Okay. So draw just put your hand up there and draw and pick out one for us. There right. we go. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, this one is for uh, last one was for a subscription, wasn't it? Yes. So this one's for a book. Uh, Trudy's going to draw for this book called Deep Sky Wonders. Um. Oh, nice book. It's a nice uh, Sky and Telescope book. Tour of the Universe with Sky and Telescope's Sue French. Uh, has a lot of information in on each particular... You can't really see that, I know, but for each particular... I have that book. You do? Okay. Um, for each particular season, there's lots of uh, uh, information about, uh, the, uh, about each month of the season. Uh, yeah, all kinds of starry stuff in there. <laughs> if, I, if I can comment on that book... Please do. Um, People undertaking observing programs, a uh, complaint they often have is, I don't know how to describe what I see. Well, go and read Sue French's book, and you'll learn the vocabulary to how to describe uh, the objects you see. Awesome. Thanks, Emil. Appreciate that. So, we're going to give that book to... Oh, look who that is. Emma McPhee. Hey. Hey, Emma. <laughs> hey, hey, Emma. <laughs> so Emma, uh, we'll get be getting that book to you, and thank you for being a top fan of the page. Appreciate that. Okay, uh, we've got we're waiting right. now on. Um, thank you, Trudy, again. Um, okay, I'm gonna drop off the call here. Okay, thanks so much. See ya. Thanks, guys. Good There's to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. Uh, from there, we're going to go to uh, Chris Wiedek. I think we're just waiting for Chris to join us. Um, but what I could do, I suppose, is maybe uh, introduce a couple of bloopers, if I have any. I can find any. I'm not sure exactly where Should they I are. Should I log off now? Oh, that's up to you, Emil. If no, no, I was, um, I was wondering if the bloopers were about me. Oh, no. <laughs> no. no, they're not. <laughs> no. Uh, there's, there's only, uh, I could only find five minutes of bloopers. Imagine five minutes of bloopers. That's all I could find. Not really, but I, I could find more, but I spent a lot of time trying to, trying to go through the hundred episodes to pick out a few. So I just picked out a few that, uh, I could kind of laugh at, I guess. So, um, let me see if I can get those up while we wait for Chris. And then if Chris, uh, isn't coming on, I think it's Chris next, wasn't it? Yes, it was Chris Wiedek. And then it was, uh, John Reed. 
Cool. So we'll, we'll wait for Chris for a few minutes, and I can show these bloopers in the meantime, maybe. Okay, let me see if I can find this here. Now, you guys are probably going to have to turn up your volume a little bit. Um, and I'm going to have to share that on the right screen. I have to share it so you guys can see it in just a second. Uh, where am I at? There we are. Okay. The screen. And I think it was this one. No, that's not it. That's the wrong one. <laughs> anyway, there it comes. I'll, get, I'll bring it up over here. Now, can you see that? You guys can see that, okay? Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So this is our this is our first night. Uh, you might have to turn up your volume on your Facebook or YouTube to catch it. I think the audience can pick it up. But this was, was uh, night number one, and watch how scary our faces look. You don't it's look too scary, do we? <laughs> 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 oh man! Welcome everybody. <clears throat> And then we went to something like this. Like every once in a while, we ended up with a little bit of a glitch. Every once in a while, no, quite often actually. But this is like uh, kind of one of the glitches that we. You could hear me with my uh, frustration there in the background. Maybe I'll just play that again. Welcome everybody. Uh -uh. <laughs> of course. Yeah. A little bit frustrated because we're all locked. <laughs> We're all locked on the screen here. You see nobody's moving. That's funny. Back in the earlier Skype days. And I dare not close it. Let's get a picture up here. Did somebody uh, snapped a photo? Or, uh... <laughs> I thought somebody snapped the photo, maybe. Uh, but maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But later on, as we get moving through the show, we, we just decided, you know something, we'll just have some fun with the show, so... We just kind of continued okay, with Paul's the... Okay, Paul's to talk on some camera use to say, Paul. Well, yeah. Uh, before I do, though, um, yeah. oh, we've got that. I'm going to catch up with Rosanna for the week. Yes. So um, let me just share my screen. And while I do that, you can do your famous... Oh, do we not have, um, any, do we not have anything yet? So this is this is before we had uh, Rosanna's fun facts uh, from uh, Peter Visima there, who graciously contributed to us. So. No, not yet. <laughs> So here comes, here comes Rosanna's fun <laughs> I kind of like Peter's version a whole lot better. That's the only part of my whole show. That's the only thing I do. And I, and I practice it all week. Can Mike, can you, can you 3D print us or something maybe for that? Yeah. Oh. You can. Yeah. You might. Okay, uh, from there, we're still waiting for Chris. We'll see if Chris has come in yet or not. And I'll stop presenting for a minute. <clears throat> uh, no, no Chris yet. <clears throat> so maybe what we'll do is we'll we'll roll on, we'll hang on to those uh, last few for a little bit later. And uh, Kathy, you want to be up next? How do you feel about being up next? A little bit later. And... Uh, Kathy, you want to be up next? Sure, can do. Okay, so somebody um, has their uh, information or their sound cranked up there. Yep, yeah, I can hear sound. Yeah, I can too. Yeah. No, not me. Not me. Is it gone? That was muted. Okay. <laughs> I think it's gone. All right. Still, I got I to switch up my order here. Here we go. Okay, there's Kathy. <laughs> Hey, Kathy. Yes. Hey. <laughs> okay, so Kathy is a relative newcomer to the hobby. Uh, well, the, yeah. that part of it. Uh, but I say she's quickly becoming an accomplished uh, amateur astronomer and most recently a capture of some amazing planetary images. <clears throat> Very amazing. Uh, Kathy has introduced uh, many to the rings of Saturn and many beautiful captures of Jupiter and its moons. Uh, she's doing a great job on that. Uh, she was also a guest on our show recently sharing her knowledge of capturing these objects using special cameras and the software, uh, which she's really mastered very well. Uh, Kathy also spends time capturing other celestial treasures with her camera equipment and is quickly learning the possibilities of this amazing hobby. So welcome, Kathy. 
Thank you. <laughs> All right. So what have you been up to? I have been outside imaging. I just came in, actually. Yes. A while ago. <laughs> I was outside. It was wonderful. I got a headlamp so I can see Stinky when he wanders around. Stinky. <laughs> oh, stinky. I can see stinky. Yeah. Best thing I could have got was my headlamp because it, the whole yard is visible now. You right. cannot see them. Uh, yeah, I was out doing some Jupiters, and I haven't processed them all. They're still stacking and I'm away. But okay. uh, I was out this morning, and I did some sun shooting. I like shooting solar. I love the sun. Yeah. Uh, it, fascinating. Totally fascinating. And you're using a C6. I'm uh, using a C6. Slash uh, on C6. So, yeah, I mean, that's what, what you're turning out S6. for um, for uh, pictures. It's just, it's, it's, it's. I uh, love that little It's scope. amazing what you're turning yeah. out for pictures oh, with that little scope. Yeah. I yeah. absolutely love that scope. Yeah. Um, it's even with. I love it with my the new camera, the ZWO. I love it with that. But even with my um, my little Sony, my A6000 hooked on it, I right. can do single shots of the sun and the moon, and, and it's it's just a nice scope. Yeah. No, yeah. And, and do you have dark skies where you are, or do you have to go far? Or? Uh, no, I don't have dark skies. I have, I'm about a five, but it's not bad. I can move around. I have to w sort of wiggle around trees a lot. That's my... I'm running around the yard trying to find a spot that there's no trees. That's okay, like okay. Um, just one second here. I just see that Chris Wiedek was trying to join. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm just typing I back. Can, I can sit tight and wait. I'm in no rush. Okay. I'm, not... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just typing that I can't see him uh, asking to join. So. I thought uh, I heard a beep. I might have missed him. I'll ask him to join again. I think you're muted, Paul. <laughs> uh, yeah, Paul's talk, his this lips is, are moving. This yeah. is the thing about being live. It's uh, sometimes you miss uh, the odd little thing. I hope the audience can appreciate the her Herculean task that Chris is doing here. Not only does he have to be host and narrator, he's doing all the technical stuff at the same time. Uh, it's only really six, my six my screens. hats off to you. <laughs> Thanks, Emil. Thank you. It's just six screens, so it's not that. <laughs> my eyeballs are just. <laughs> uh, just waiting for Chris to see if he can join. If you don't mind, Kathy. Yeah. Well, oh, um, gosh, no, not at all. You're here. You're here anyway. Oh. You're here. But so, so what I was just saying. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Come on, Paul. Was that, um, it doesn't matter if you don't have dark skies for doing planetary stuff anyway. No. So that's the beauty of that is you can do that no matter where you are, really. Yep. So. Yeah. yeah that part, I, it's great because you don't have to have it. Hey, you don't need dark skies for solar either. No, surprisingly <laughs> not. <laughs> you just need the torture towel so you can throw it over your head, roast underneath it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You get clear skin that way though, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Chris is, uh, I'm still haven't seen a comment response back. So I haven't seen him pop up here. Uh, maybe he did while I was showing the bloopers. But uh, still waiting to see if he pops back in. So we'll keep the conversation going here for a few minutes. There you go. Hey. So is that, is your cat purchased a new, any new items for you, Kathy? Yeah, the cat did a little bit of shopping again, yeah. The cat likes the shop. <laughs> I think she just likes the boxes. I think that's the key. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, which means cloudy skies for a while. That's why I thought I'd better run outside tonight. So most people don't know what you're talking about with your cat. So if you can Oh, yeah. Um, my cat buys the equipment. She's very, he's very good at, at punching the keys. He's got my sign-in on my, my uh, PayPal, and he knows my debit card and my MasterCard. He's very good. <laughs> Yeah. Every time That's she buys something, true. blame it on the cat. <laughs> With one purchase from the cat, and all of a sudden, were, my cat was buying for a lot of people, apparently. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she, she trained was, other cats by the look of it. Uh, yeah. Well, there was another one up here just a little while ago trying to figure this all out. <laughs> and have an army of them. I'm out of touch with all the inside jokes in the oh, in the show my, now. Yeah, my cat look that was the inside. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Hey, there's John. Hey John. Hello, how you doing? Can you hear hey, me? Yes, we can. Yep. 
Yeah. yeah. All still, right. Still waiting to see if Chris Swedick was going to join in, but I don't see. Uh... Oh, she said, uh, no, I just thought I might alert him here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead then anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll bring Chris in when Chris comes in for sure. And if we got an extra person on the screen, who cares, right? It's a kitchen. It's a kitchen party. Kind of. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing this on a wing of the prayer. Everybody knows that. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk to Mr. John here. Hey, John. Um, so a little bit of introduction for John Reed. John is a successful local astronomy writer, I would say, and a graduate of astrophysics uh, who began his journey into astronomy with a small telescope purchased at his local pharmacy. <laughs> Uh, he was so fascinated uh, observing the moon and Saturn with his rings that he decided to share these views by writing his first book, 50 Things to See with a Small Telescope. Uh, he's, and he's, uh, he self-published and sold it through Amazon back in 2013. Uh, since then, John has written a number of other books uh, on space for children, including 50 Things to See on the Moon. He has also recently released several more books, including 50 Animals That Went to Space, uh, 50 Space Missions That Have Changed the World, uh, is to, uh, uh, 50 Animals of Ben to Space, which he co-wrote with his wife, Jennifer, of course. Uh, and besides uh, writing, um, and uh, besides writing, John has works at the uh, as a telescope operator at St. Mary's uh, Burke's uh, Gaffney Observatory. John has graciously donated a number of his excellent books to us here on the show and for my moon contest in the past. And uh, we're happy to welcome to the show. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me on, and great to see everyone again. Yeah. Paul and uh, Emil and, and Tim and Kathy. I, I forget if we met, maybe on the beach there at one point. But, yeah, probably. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, so what have you been up to? Oh, gosh. Well, I've been uh, Nothing. mostly yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> parenting on uh, steroids here. We've mm. got the new uh, new baby who's now not so oh, new. Yeah. Old, oh, Edwin, yeah. yeah. Named after Edwin, um, Edwin Hubble, primarily. And then uh, we realized that Buzz Aldrin's first name was Edwin as well. Oh. So we got sort of the, the one-two punch on, on baby names. Here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but the big news from us is that we've, we we uh, finally got out a book that I've been working on for three or four years, and that's this new book, 110 Things to See with a Telescope. That's you know, this new book right here. Is if I things to see with a Telescope right there. Green screen. <laughs> yeah. So this, this was co-written with, with Chris Vaughn, uh, who's also a, a RASP member, mm. and uh, he's also a columnist with Space.com. All right. Tim's got a copy, too. Um, yeah. And so we just had a lot of fun. Putting this together, um, all of the photos, the telescope view photos, were all taken um, by us using one of several telescopes. A lot of them uh, were, were the BGO, but then some of them were, um, you know, my if I needed a wider field, I'd use a, a sharp star, which is f 2.7 or something with all the wow. focal reducers, so you get a nice wide, wide view. Um, yeah, so. That is what I've been working on, and, and uh, I don't know it was, that, it was a fun project. The best the best part was getting Tim Russ to do the forward and just getting you know emailing back and forth with him. That's amazing to get him was uh, on the forward. Yeah, that was that was, yeah, I, was, I, I, that was awesome. Was yeah. yeah, yeah, that's Tuvok on Star Trek. So uh, Tuvok, probably, Tuvok uh, on Tuvok. Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then he found out that my wife my wife's seen far more Voyager than than I have. I'm not even sure if I've seen every episode. Oh, don't say it. <laughs> and, and it, well, because I was, I was just, I was young. Yeah. And uh, so was I, I think they were airing on, on CBC like once a week. So it was hard to catch them. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so, but my wife had seen them all. And so when Tim found out that my wife did the design, so Jennifer did all this great interior design work on the book yes, uh, and, did, and came up with the layout and everything and the colors. Because if you look on the side, it's color coordinated by season. Yes, it is. Um, yep. And um, so, because that was the thing that when he first saw it, he was like, wow, this layout is amazing. And mm. so he immediately put a whole stack of signed photos in the mail for Jennifer. <clears throat> That's awesome. Um, yeah, which, is, a, which is pretty darn cool. He's an amateur astronomer himself, uh, Tim. He is, yeah. So yeah. he volunteers at the Griffith Observatory. Mm -hmm. And he's also got a lot, quite a bit of video content as well that he'll put on, uh, that he's put on YouTube. And sometimes he invites other cast members 
from Star Trek on his amateur astronomy adventure. Oh. So if you get a chance to YouTube Tim Russ, the Griffith Observatory, you'll see like the doctor from Star Trek oh, awesome. uh, as well there. But he he's a trooper because he lives in uh, West Hollywood um, or thereabouts. And But he will drive out to Bortle, you know, one skies from L.A., Wow. And it's it's, it's a long drive. He, he goes out to the middle of nowhere. He brings a gun for wildcats, <laughs> like, uh, which which is an issue in the, the hills outside of Los Angeles. Um, so it was really a, a, interesting to get to know sort of that side of him and interact with yeah. the writing of this uh, forward for the book. So, yeah. oh, that's awesome to, to get yeah. him on that, and yeah, to to realize that he isn't uh, that he's right into that hobby with us is so nice. Uh, I, I I didn't know that until I. Uh, saw a short clip on him. It's like, wow, that's cool. So yeah, I mean, your book, John, is uh, is amazing. It's uh, and this covers it all. Like that covers all of the, all the stuff that we're going to want to for amateurs to see for sure. Like the 110 objects, right? So yeah, the goal was to get people um, to that Messier level to completing their Messier certificate mm. with the minimum amount of barriers. And I didn't. My my rule was I don't even want you to have to turn a page. You know. If after you've got your target, you've chosen, I'm going to see M31, I want you to be able to see it, know what to expect, rec right. and record your observation and sketch it and find it with the star map without turning a page, just yep. so that there's absolutely no barrier um, to, and I, I feel like for millennials like like me, that's been a, that's been a challenge. We're not, we're not good at getting a, books and papers. We're very digital. Yes. So to have, even though it is a book, having it on one page really speaks to, I feel like the people that aren't, that can't handle like, like me, I like multiple forms of input. It's like, we got to have it here and, and right in front of us. And, right. And it meets that goal. And Emil can, can attest to the fact of, of what sketching does for you for, for as far as the hobby goes, because uh, he's done a lot of it. And, you know, that, that commits it back to memory for you, like you said, right? So sketching something really puts that in your mind, what you're, what you're yeah. expecting to see next time around. So. Absolutely. It improves your uh, observing skills a yeah. lot. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, when we're working with the, uh, the students at St. Mary's, this, for the students that aren't astrophysics students, I think at, at least until COVID, they pushed six or 700 of them through a year, like the, the Stars and Planets course. Um, and they would go up to the observatory and their goal was to find something interesting that sparked their curiosity and sketch it. And that was their project. Yeah. And so we would do a ton of sketching. I have a whole folder at the telescope, which is just my examples of sketching for the students. Wow. And I, I'm sure if I were to go like dig out that folder, I might be able to actually get like find this NGCs or something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're probably it's quite a stack at this point. And, and you're um, heavy into YouTube now as well, John, right? Yeah, so that was an experiment that I started last August. So <laughs> I came up with the handle that somehow hadn't been taken, Learn to Stargaze. Mm. And I switched all my social media over to Learn to Stargaze. And my goal was to make 50 YouTube videos and sort of see how it went mm. um, and see if it would take off. And, and I have to get back to writing because I do writing full time. But um, the YouTube, I'm going to start going back to YouTube because I average about 20,000 views a month now. I've seen that. Yeah, they're amazing. Like some of you, yeah, I mean, um, you've done topics that people are in. You, the whole YouTube thing to me is just how to. How do I learn how to do? It seems to be a, an instructional place for me anyway. Uh, I mean, oh, there's a lot of entertainment there as well. But yeah. when people are trying to learn how, what, what telescope should I purchase, like they have a question. And I've done it many times, gone to YouTube, look for reviews on telescopes or look for reviews on equipment, but also like, how do I make this happen? And yeah. you've, 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 uh, you've cornered that part of the market, like in, in your topics, you, you tend to, to lead down that path, right? And yeah. make it John, as simple as possible. So it's, it's hard uh, to find a topic that's unique, I found, yeah. especially in astronomy, because there's so many people in the space. And what I found is lacking is that a lot of people have a junky telescope at home. Well, how do you, even if you've got that junky telescope, how do you find the joy? Right. And so about half of my videos are like, I know the telescope isn't great, but let's get it going. Let's see what we can see. And then check out my other videos. We'll help you, you know, find the next step. But for wherever you are, we'll, we'll meet you where you are. If you've got that, you know, so I started with a 35 millimeter diameter telescope. Um, and I actually bought three of them because I bought the first one for like $13.95. But then we were able to super coupon and I got another one for $4. 
And then it was the way that the CVS works in the States is if you, you buy makeup and stuff. So my wife had bought a bunch of makeup and then you can, you can combine the coupon. So we got the next telescope for 48 cents. And then oh, wow. 48 cents. <laughs> yeah. 48 cents. Uh, brand new telescope. Yeah, it was great. It, had, it was the ones with the 9.8 millimeter eyepieces. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and just really like, oh, bad. Can <laughs> I ask Can I ask something to John while he's on this topic? Please, yes. Sure. Do you have videos on how to use DOBs, like the finder scope and telerads and how to actually find objects? And... Yeah, and I'd like to do more. So I just... Okay, so the... you do have them. Yeah, so I have... We, okay, I'm going to point all the beginners who ask me questions oh. to you. <laughs> I, need to do, me too. I need to do more, though. So I, uh, and some of them are on my old YouTube channel. So this summer I did one on the 6-inch Dobsonian. Um, but all the videos generally recommend the Dob. Like yeah. in, in, in the video I did on mess, the Messier targets, it's like if there's one telescope, if you don't have one yet, and you want to get this list done, 8-inch Dob. Yeah. And, and I buy mine, I bought uh, my two smaller DOBs used. So I bought my eight inch DOB off a retired computer programmer for $200. And then my most recent DOB, the six inch DOB, which I, I donated to the St. Jude fundraiser that we did this summer. Uh, I only paid 150 for it used. So there's lots of those on the market as well. And so you don't need to break the bank getting into a telescope that you'll enjoy for the rest of your life. Right, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't take and much, no, yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, do you also have instructional videos on how to do star alignments for those who have computerized telescopes? Because that's the other most frequently asked thing I get. How do I align my telescope? Yeah, and I'd love to do specific ones for that. So I did some, they're in my other videos. So like I did the EQ, our EQ6 Pro when I bought that mount. Um, and so like that's, that's inside the video, but I need to like sort of break it down and start doing other ones specific to answer those questions, yeah. Right. The reason I haven't so far is there is a lot of other people that do that. Um, so, uh, and it takes, it, it's a lot of time to pull one of these videos together. So I'm trying to be very specific about what I choose, but those are definitely high on my list. Like going, revisiting the job, revisiting um, the go-to mount, um, probably do the Celestron first because it's a little bit more popular. Yeah. That's good to know. I'm going to point the beginners towards you because <laughs> yeah. it's hard to, to do mentoring now with COVID and everything, eh? Yeah, so it's at Learn to Stargaze, and they can actually reach out to me directly too at uh, learn to stargaze.com. There's a contact us page, and I'm usually good within the day answering uh, any questions. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome, John. Absolutely. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on the show. Hey, thank you for thank you for joining us, and thanks. Uh, please come back again. Yeah. We'd love to get uh, more information on uh, what your next project's going to be. But before you go away, I have to get you to draw. How about we draw for uh, what's this book here? 110 things to see with a telescope. Maybe we'll draw <laughs> one of them. <laughs> so, Who would have uh, known? Just put your hand up there by your webcam and uh, reach in there and grab it, grab in the bowl. And... Perfect. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. You got one. <laughs> and uh, the winner of 110 things to, uh, to see with a telescope by Mr. John Reed here on the screen with us is going to be Dan White. Hey, Dan. Hey, way to go, Dan. Hey. Congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations. Awesome. And thank you, John, for the donations of these books. John did donate a few books here for our cause, so uh, we're always into our moon contest, and John's very gracious in, in uh, helping us out with that, so appreciate it. And thank you so much for, for joining us on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris, thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay. Nice uh, and next up, we've got Mr. Karim Jaffer is going to join us here in a second. Hey, Karim. I'm already here. Hey, hey he is there. Hey. <laughs> already here. I haven't got uh, my notes ready yet. Okay, this is. I get to put a face to a name now. Yeah, she can. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I'm glad to see Paul still wearing the great Habs cap now that they won yesterday. Oh, can do it with pride. That that never goes away. Game last night. We won't hold that against him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for all of you who haven't met Karim, Karim is a, a professor of physics and astronomy outreach at John Abbott College, uh, based in Saint Anne de Bellevue in uh, Quebec. Uh, he's been at John Abbott College since 2006, uh, teaching a variety of yeah, <laughs> uh, teaching a variety of uh, physics and pathways courses and began teaching the introductory astronomy course in 2016. Uh, Karim has also taught in physics, mathematics, education, and exercise science at Bishop's University, uh, in physics at Carleton University, and uh, Marianopolis College. Uh, uh, Karim is also a public events coordinator um, 
at the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, the Montreal Centre. And uh, Karim has uh, been an avid supporter of our efforts here. He has been uh, on our show and our outreach efforts uh, in general, of course, for Mind Through Astronomy by the Bay as well. So it's a real pleasure to have you on the show, Karim. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I still have to make it out there to St. John. We tried this summer, but with the uh, COVID barriers still uh, mm-hmm. still bubbled off, it was not uh, doable. But one of these days. We'll We're going to get you here for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There's no doubt. So tell us what's, uh, what's been going on with you in astronomy world. Sure. Uh, can I actually uh, share Absolutely. I've got a couple of slides? So. Sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah. There we go. Can you see that okay? Yes, we yes. can. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. So, one of the big things we started doing uh, over the COVID times is because we started delivering stuff virtually, we decided to extend our land acknowledgement to a land and sky acknowledgement. And uh, thanks to Dave Chapman out in uh, Nova Scotia, we actually started incorporating some of the Mi'kmaq moons. And so, we've been sharing with people, not just locally, but also with the Astronomical League in the US and Solar Sphere over in the UK. We've been sharing a little bit of the indigenous stories of the night sky uh, across the world. And it's been fantastic to see. Uh, I started incorporating some of the stories from other cultures as well. And so we've been talking a little bit about the Australian stories, the UK, different tribes in the US. And it really does lend a little bit to the depth to which we see some of the stuff in the night sky. Locally, we're still continuing all of our public events by Zoom. we decided to be a little bit more cautious. I know some places are starting to do their public events and outreach in person, but we've decided to stick to Zoom at least until the end of the winter season. So hopefully around spring, we'll start in person again. We did manage a couple of in-person outreach events, but uh, only with sharing things by screen. Taking the example from uh, Chris in Astronomy by the Bay, uh, It's been nice to be chatting with him in the middle of the night and talking to him a little bit about some of the stuff that he was doing out at the beaches and uh, seeing just the impact that he has when he delivers stuff on Facebook, you know, sharing the moon and sharing sunrise and sunset, sharing the planets. It really does impact people. And so we're continuing our, our public events, but we're also trying to do a little bit of that outreach. And so we've been reaching out to partners to do it together. Uh, But for those people in the audience who are interested, this Friday, we are doing a safe Zoom Halloween for kids. So you can join us for an hour and it's going to be animated by some of our students at John Abbott. They're going to be doing a few activities. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And so you can just join us at bit.ly slash spooky nights 2021 and uh, come in costume. And I want to see everybody in costume, including you, Chris, if you join us. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't have a costume, I don't think. Yeah, no, I think no, I might have one. Have one. <laughs> well, Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, doesn't matter? No? No, it doesn't oh, matter at okay. all. And actually, uh, you know, Astro if you Man. Spider-Man, everybody's going to be there with you. Or you oh, can okay. just wear a spacesuit. Yeah. Yeah, there. Okay. <laughs> so I've actually been – so during COVID, one of the big things that happened is I started expanding into a global audience with my outreach. So I'm part of a Reach Out and Touch Space panel on a volunteer radio station in the United Kingdom called Astro Radio. And I know some of your audience has actually followed us out there with, uh, with uh, some of the contact that they've done with me on Facebook and hearing a little bit about some of the events that I post. So we have a Canadian week coming up in November where we're going to have David Levy on on November 8th and Dr. Natalie Willette, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope Outreach Scientist, on on November 11th. And so these shows are in the evening time in the UK on Mondays and Thursdays, but for us, it's actually late afternoon. So it actually, you know, it fits very nicely at the end of the work day to just listen to a little bit of astronomy and listen to some good music. Mm. And then the bigger public, the bigger events that I've been part of in terms of my own presentation has been the Global Star Parties. And I'm very happy to announce that Chris is going to be joining me this Tuesday at the 70th Global Star Party with Explore Scientific and the Explore Alliance. And this is actually hosted by uh, Scott Roberts, the head of Explore Scientific, and sponsored by the Astronomical League. And Chris is going to talk a little bit about the Sunday night astronomy shows, the astronomy by the bay, and the awesome outreach he's been doing into the classrooms as well. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks, Graham. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. And so it, the event starts at 6 o'clock Central Time. So on the Atlantic Coast, that I believe is 8 p.m. your time. So it's a good early enough time. And I think we're on in the first hour. So that'll be nice. Awesome. Yeah. No, uh, 
Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and and uh, the Global Star Party reaching out like that is amazing as well. You've got to you've got to get me a, a note with with all of the information you just uh, revealed here, so that I can that's pass that on. Yeah. Please yeah. send that on. Yeah, so I can get that out to everybody for sure. I will as soon as it's posted by Explore Alliance. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna tag astronomy by the bay so that we get awesome. it into the, the public and one of the really neat things about these star parties is they are global we have contributors from nepal from australia new zealand from south america from the us and from canada and so we actually and from the uk so we get a lot of getting to see what astronomy outreach is like in different areas and it creates a lot of amazing contacts and amazing collaborations yeah it's uh Cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it really brings the astronomy to a global atmosphere, right? So that's and exactly. the, that's what we we all, all have to remember, even going through everything that we're going through right now. That when we all look up, we're looking at the same moon. So we're looking at the same moon, and one of the oh, we did a global star party a couple of weeks back with New Zealand, and it was a nice uh, five-hour event on a Saturday night. And getting to see their moon laps and recognizing that the moon is rising in a different <laughs> oh it was it was it was I uh, that would wow. be that'd be wonderful to see the the, uh, the the night sky from the southern hemisphere for sure yeah oh, rising and from the other direction <laughs> half of our local rascals were just so jealous of their skies I mean they get they get the Mag Magellanic clouds they get a beautiful Milky Way arm they get some incredible clusters and incredible nebulae that are naked eye bright and it's just yeah, we got to go visit them. <laughs> and they usually get a good run in on, on comets, too. Uh, like, uh, we've got a few comets coming up now. I know there's one in December that's coming, A1 Leonard, that is hopefully going to be a good comet for us. But uh, if it isn't for us, it'll be for them. And exactly. usually they end up getting getting the better end of the deal. So uh, It's yeah. funny, though. They were jealous of Neowise. They were, oh, were they? quite a bit jealous, yeah, because okay. we got the brightest time of Neowise uh, up in the northern hemisphere. So yeah, it was we nice. Got some nice views. Yeah, oh, it was. We're due for another one. They're, it they're kept a great us going nicely. Yeah, they're, they're a great draw for outreach, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, all the stuff going on at my college and in my astronomy course. So uh, with the RASC's help, uh, I do these major projects for my astronomy students where they really get to dive into some hands-on astronomy using modern techniques. So I've got a, three groups that are going to be going the next two Wednesday nights onto the remote telescope with uh, Jenna and the team, and they're going to be doing exoplanet transits. And then I have another three groups that are doing spectroscopy, and we have the RSpec filter that we purchased for the RASC Montreal Center, and my college purchased another one so we can have two telescopes going on targets, and students can take the spectra and do the analysis. And I have Alberio there, so you can actually see that there is a difference in the spectra you get to see visibly. So we actually incorporated that into our outreach a while back. And then last year, I started working with Orion's Quest, which does biological experiments on the ISS. And on top of all of that, I have a couple of groups doing astrophotography projects on nebulae and trying to do some narrowband science. So my students really get to dive into a little bit of the actual astronomy, thanks to all the partnerships that I have with the RASC and some of these other networks. Uh, the work that I've been doing with Astro Radio has opened up a, uh, a collaboration with the Fox Telescope group so that we actually have access to a remote telescope in Australia and their archives to get data for students who want to do nebulae from the southern hemisphere. And then I, of course, we're we talk about the moon with astronomy by the bay. So I get my students to look up every term and do some sketches of the moon in different uh, phases. And so when John talked about getting the students at the observatory to do some sketching, it really is incredible what they take away when they finally try to draw what their eyes are showing them. Mm. And they don't even need sophisticated equipment. These are done mostly naked eye or binoculars or digital cameras. Mm. And they take some pictures and then they try to sketch what they see. And so that's kind of what I've been up to over here. Well, still, it's too bad you don't have nothing on the go. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, it's boring. When do you, you stop and read? <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and review this three or four times just to get all the information. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, yeah. I mean, be besides the Explorer Scientific uh, uh, program on Tuesday, you did mention a another uh, bunch of uh, projects that you're involved in. So please, yeah, send those along too. We'd love to pass them on to the audience as well. Absolutely. We've been, uh, we've been trying to connect Chris and I to actually do something more or to have me on to, to the Sunday night astronomy show, yeah. but 
Sunday night is that one night where I try to prep for the whole week. So it just hasn't been working out just yeah, yet. We appreciate your time here tonight. And it's been great to have you on the show. Uh, you've been a, a wonderful supporter of myself in, in particular uh, throughout this. I was happy to. I oh, was happy to. And I, honestly, when our Montreal skies are awful. Compared, compared to your skies, we get gray, we get clouds. We actually refer to it as the Montreal Nebula because you can never see through it. <laughs> <laughs> so you sharing the view and Paul posting his beautiful sunrise pics, I mean, it keeps us going. And, and just getting a chance to see the night sky from other people's vantage point when we can't ourselves. And especially we were on curfew for a good four or five months. We couldn't leave the house after 8 p.m. at night. And I'm surrounded by streetlights, so I couldn't really do much astronomy. And so getting to share other people's views and what you do with the Sunday Night Astronomy Show over the last 100 episodes, you I don't know how I can explain to you how much it means to us. It really oh, is awesome. so special. Thank you so much. We cool. really appreciate your support. Okay. Um, well, we're going to be meeting again on Tuesday night. Definitely. <laughs> for sure. So we'll get the time narrowed down, let everybody know on, on Facebook and YouTube here when we're going to be uh, live on that too. So we have to have you make a draw for us too, Grim, please. Sounds good. Right. And we're going to do a magic trick. My, my yeah. hand is going to change colors as it goes through the screen. Oh, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that? That is cool. <laughs> but, but the synchronicity is way better on this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the wonders of technology. Okay, we're going to draw for a one-year subscription to Sky News Magazine um, as well. Okay, so which, by the way, the most recent issue, uh, three of my students are published in it for oh. their Ryan's Quest project. Awesome! Oh, awesome. Hey, congratulations! Congratulations! Awesome! So that is going to go. Fair this enough. issue is going to go to uh, <laughs> Joan Elizabeth Lewis. Hey, Joan! Excellent! Uh, awesome! Hey. So, so whoever whoever gets these subscriptions, if you are already getting it, or or someone else. Uh, uh, or you're not interested in it, if you want to pass it on as a gift to someone else, all I need is, and we'll talk later on, um, I'll get a hold of everybody, and uh, just let me know a name that I can give to the uh, to the uh, magazine uh, affiliate, and uh, we'll get the book to you. Once per month. It's always nice to get that book, because I love it, because I'm looking in the mailbox for bills, and they, oh, wait, oh, there's one. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> what a nice surprise. Yeah. Thank much you so much. Much more than bills. Absolutely, 100%. Thank you, Karim, for your time, and thank you Thanks, for taking everyone. the time out of your night tonight to join us. Go so have Bill. Appreciate it. Yeah. Go have Bill. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, we're moving right along here. Pretty good. Um, we have Renat on here in a second. Maybe we'll go with just a couple of bloopers, Renat, if you don't mind. Uh, Not we're gonna we're gonna take a look at uh, oh who's that? Hang on though. Uh, oh, don't know. That was that was a oh, that was a not okay. Oh, you're just you're just shifting around a little bit. Yeah, you? I am. Okay. Uh, where did my bloopers it's go? Like that Mayjong, right? Huh? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can still find the bloopers. Uh, I think you're here. We'll just we'll just take a look at a couple more um, because maybe we do have a few, but. So uh, I think they're over here somewhere. Uh, hide that window, and I think right here. Here we are. So we have, we had a. Uh, here's Mr. Paul. <clears throat> you guys might have to turn this up to catch it on your screen, but I think oh. the audience will hear it. Okay, so. If uh, I do, it'll just be funny. So I'll just I'll. I'll... Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'll just watch the faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. I'm> like... <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so that's a that's a lead into another one. Oh, we don't want that one. Hang on, I gotta I gotta stop that. Oh, oh I'm stop that for now. Stop that. Stop it. Okay, here we go. We'll show that a little later. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was uh, another fun moment. Um, I know the volume's not very loud on those, but uh, I'm not quite sure but anyway, but. Uh, it is what it is. So, let's welcome our next new guest, uh, Renat. <clears throat> Renat Roscoe Shelton is here with us tonight. Uh, Renat is well known as one of the most interesting and accomplished local artists, uh, and she joins <laughs> us from her studio in scenic Back Bay, New Brunswick. 
Uh, her paintings are lively and colorful in her own unique, primitive and pure style, reflecting her artistic approach to balance the interplay of cultured, industrial, and natural complexity. Through her artwork, Renat discovers and records moments of insight and beauty into life's meaning and purpose, and her artistic journey helps her record an unfolding of emotional memories, wisdom, and rediscovery of nature. Renat joined us on the program back in March of this year to present a lot of her uh, amazing works, and it's a pleasure to welcome her back once again. Welcome, Renat. Thank you for having me. I certainly uh, appreciate being part of this. In fact, I came equipped. Oh, good. I have, uh, for the family-friendly portion of the show, Yes. Um, I have Pellegrino, Lime, Bubbly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I have a coffee and, mug with a coffee in it, yeah. <laughs> and I was going to mm. simulate the popping of the cork. <laughs> and... Uh, and and this goes oh, that works. There you go. comes into my story as well. So cheers to you guys. Cheers to you. <laughs> and everybody you. and Kathy and everybody. Um, it, it's really been, you know, wonderful for me to watch. I think I'm, I feel like the accidental tourist who sort of jumped <laughs> on this bandwagon. <laughs> uh, you had all these serious... Um, astronomy types <laughs> always on your show and I sort of dwell somewhere between science imagination and creativity being an artist um, I was gonna you know think about spoofs and things I could do I, I've ha I'm having a lot of fun usually watching you guys because uh, with any new field particularly in science comes language and uh, if you get on a track with putting the words and having a different image in mind uh, things can go awry and you can crack yourself up it's pretty funny actually so here's to the cork I actually found this on a bottle uh, as you know and I've told you before I've been involved in the indigenous legend with the bear and the seven um, birds. And ever since I started that, this little bear, not just this, but the bear as the symbol has been following me around. And I, I see things um, similar to thanks to astronomy uh, on the bay and the Sunday night astronomy show. This little symbol here Actually, it doesn't mean Pellegrino to me, but it used to mean communism. And now it's astronomy, and it's a star, <laughs> and it's Taurus, and it's Aldebaran, the red star, you know. So thank you for that, for ridding me of the evils of communism. <laughs> uh, it's amazing what outreach can do, right? Uh, so um, as an artist... Chris asked me to maybe just discuss briefly what I've been working on. Mm, yes. And uh, you can see behind me on the wall, and I was too lazy to get it all down, but I grabbed just one of these, which brings me also to this, <laughs> and it's hard. Oh. Uh, so, so this was an example, and it, I called it, it's kind of a spoof on myself and astronomy and back bay. And the sun and the moon are in there. And we have laundry, which is one of my symbols. But it's really, art is about similar to the sky and learning constellations in the sky. It's to look at art and discover the constellations in art and the symbolism. Uh, this series of art and basically all the art I've been doing has been inspired by watching the stars, nighttime, stepping out and watching your show and following people along. It was just this whole new field for me. Uh, and I had earlier last year painted a painting because it was pandemic times and I was depressed. <laughs> Being a sensitive soul as an artist, I had painted a painting called um, All My Star Stars Have Fallen. Yes. 
if you remember that. I remember mm -hmm. And I don't know if I want to go through this, but I have pictures of it actually on here. But I can, you know, post it in the comments too. Sure. Uh, so then I decided, well, that it was too depressive. So this is kind of my latest now. So I'm resurrecting the stars. <laughs> Uh, eventually they'll end up back in the sky <laughs> and um, I uh, I have kept my laundry line a symbol and I'm washing my stars and of course being back bay and being in the summer we had a lot of whales uh, and I always try to bring in something from the surrounding elements um, I don't know if you can see the whale tail oh here. yeah absolutely yeah uh, Air dominant. And so I'm whale washing the stars. Hmm. There's a pun on words in there, just to be sure. <laughs> whale watching, whale washing, right? And then I had to get to the stars, so I'm I'm connecting all of this. Um, I am. Uh, I am on Facebook and usually post all the good, bad, and ugly of my art <laughs> and the sausage making part to my Facebook group. And so I did figure I'd share this thing with you before we can move on. And I think the keyword that, may, well, maybe I want to, the keyword that was mentioned this evening by Paul was Chrome Dome. <laughs> <laughs> and it, <laughs> here's another thing. <laughs> this is my albatross. <laughs> Part of an exercise. What I what I have to do is actually dress this fellow up, and and I I'm I'm gonna I don't know what the style of he headdress is for uh, Chris, but I think it's a beret, right? Sort of yeah, mine, beret. yeah, kind of. Well, yeah, it's yeah. a James, it's a James Taylor hat. The way uh, wears, yeah. Right, but it's it's a lovely hat, and it's actually. You know, men in the 30s in a certain profile in Berlin used to wear it. It's a very cosmopolitan yeah. hat. I, I feel as old as a man uh, in, that lived in his 30s. Well, too, it's, in it's very, very <laughs> trendy again. Oh, thanks. <laughs> my nephew, who is, you know, in the 30s, he wears these kind of things. Uh, but anyway, my albatross is going to be... It has an unca uncanny but resemblance to you, Paul. It does. <laughs> yeah. yeah I I'll be right back. Hang on a second. I have to show something too. So. Well, I'm absolutely <laughs> glad that uh, you enjoyed this part. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> so, I'm not sure, but I just wanted to point out that this is, was one of Renat's paintings as well. And uh, this one was commissioned uh, by uh, Paul and Mike uh, in, in my honor for... Uh, for the uh, total solar eclipse, I got to pin that for a second, yes. if you don't mind. There, Renat, I love your artwork. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's it's Thank amazing. Thank you very much. Oh, beautiful. Wish the camera held a better view of it, but uh, that's the uh, the total solar or the uh, partial solar eclipse that we had back on June the tenth. Wish that was. That a was bit quite better. the wonderful event. Oh, that's and because my screen is blurry. That's why. I'm sorry. There it is. It's there. Fixed. Chris, just put it up now. Okay. And and. and and Chris, it was in the in the selection of uh, pictures that you showed in the first round. Yes, it was. Yes, yeah. So, I'm be sure to include that because it was very important to me. Uh, it was a, it was an amazing gift that these two guys gave me, and uh, for you to commission it, Renat, I'm I'm so grateful for this. It, it's a it's a very treasured memory. So, believe me, it's going up on the wall here behind me. Once I get my other ones up here, but it'll be center center stage. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's the kind of work that Renat does. It's it's uh, it's very colorful, very cheery, very uh, well. Most of it is for sure, but it's uh, it's and, uh, very interesting. Yeah. By I the mean, way, it's called a newsboy cap. 
a newsboy news cap. Okay, news thank you cap. for that. You oh. looked it up, didn't you? <laughs> no, I, I, I have one. And yes, I looked it up before because I have a video thing I'm doing, and I was going to do it the, the, something about the, the astronomy guy with a hat or something. I can't remember. So the hat that I had on was the same one that Chris has. Mm. So um, anyway, so, so I looked it up to see what it was, and it's, news, it's a newsboy app. Right on. <laughs> Or flat cap, whatever you want to call it. Well, well wonderful. <clears throat> well, we're um, not, we want to thank you for coming on the show, and we want to thank you for uh, joining us earlier on the show. She joined us uh, when she was able to show us uh, her latest book. I was afraid I would fall asleep. Oh my God. Oh my I hope God. it kept you awake. <laughs> well, we put you to sleep now, do we? <laughs> yeah, they were all telling me that they might not be uh, awake by the time my time slot would come up. No, it was. It was. Uh, I, I was trying to slot everybody in for the right times, and we get eleven people here to, to join us. Cheers. Yes. So um, it's been wonderful to have everybody on so far. It's just been incredible. I'm just relieving a, a sigh of relief here because we're, we're this far through the program now, and uh, you know it's it's uh, it's been been going great. So I'm glad everybody has stuck with us on on both uh, channels here too. So it's been awesome. But thank now you, don't uh, it, Chris. Don't jinx it. Not done yet. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I still got bloopers to show. So <laughs> I want to thank you uh, very much uh, for joining us, uh, Renat. And um, I guess Kathy's going to be up next, right? So. Um, we we appreciate and please Thank come back not. and bye bye yeah, yeah please come back and join us see again on the not. show thank you Thanks. good to see you I just love Renat's work oh yeah it's just it's amazing oh. uh, yeah and her you can go to renatart.com that's where you find her her work um, she has a lot of uh, work uh, listed up there and uh, it's amazing yeah, uh, my husband and I had an art gallery when we lived in Ontario and I just I just love I would have loved her work yeah. It is amazing, for sure. Beautiful. Um, yeah, we're very lucky to have her, and for that artwork that she she uh, did up there as well. So uh, I've got where's my other notes? Oh, I've just been hanging down in this corner down here. And yes, she <laughs> have been. Now, now my notes draw, are all mixed up. Hey, Renat didn't draw a prize. Oh, she didn't. No, she didn't. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Mr. Renat. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hey, Renata, if you're, if you're still out there, we'll, we'll see if she comes back. Renata, if you're still out there, come on back and join us because you got to draw a prize. And hopefully she will. I'll be back. I'll be back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's oh, there she is. Yay. <laughs> she heard us. She was having a whale of a time. Oh, uh, uh, that's, Okay, hang on now. Let's get her back. Yep. we got to have you on here. So, there in you go, go, big hand, big, big, deep, real deep. There we go. Awesome. Okay, this one is for, um, this one is for the backyard, <laughs> actually, this one is for the backyard guide to the night sky, uh, National Geographic uh, oh, hardcover okay. book. It yeah. uh, has full of information on uh, star maps, lots of star maps in there, lots of information on the constellations, a great handy book to take outside, nice red flashlight. You've got lots of uh, information to go by. Uh, talks from sky watching basics right through to um, full out uh, star charts. So oh, nice. another great uh, handy book to have, and that is going to go to. Where'd she go? Oh, she must have stepped off again. She did. Uh, that's going to Jim Waters. Hey, cool. hey, Jim! Congratulations, Congratulations Jim! Jim. Awesome. awesome. Ah, you know it's something. I got notes all over the floor here. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> there you were. I was trying to find you. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the floor <laughs> just covered with stuff. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's all blurred out in the background, so that's not bad. Hey, Kathy. So Kathy's uh, going to be our next on our program. Kathy, is there, um, did we already get yeah, through all your notes? We already, that's why it's on the floor, because we already went through all this, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. I've just been sitting in the little corner down here <laughs> watching, and I thought, what am I going to Okay, let's go, back. let's go back to our discussion, Kathy. Um, That's why it's on the floor, because we already went through all this, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Who's, got the, who's got the radio up? Who's got the radio up? Who's got the radio up? Not me. Who's got the radio up? There it is. I don't know what that was. Okay. <laughs> we had to have a glitch. Hey! Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be our bloopers. show without a glitch. You said bloopers. There you go. Yeah. It's the ghost. <laughs> 
He's oh, let's, 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 uh, let's do one more blooper, and then we're going to talk to Kathy. All one, right. One real quick blooper. This is good. This okay. is good. Uh, go to this one. So, but like I say, later on, we got a little bit more relaxed with the show. We, like, we don't really care now. <laughs> we just, it is what it is. And we've, we've accepted the fact that it is what it is. So, you know, we just try to have fun along with it, with our guests uh, along the way. So I'll introduce a little bit more here. Oh yeah. So this is Paul's uh, little take. He was doing a Rosanna's fun fact is what it was. Yes. And uh, I think this is the end of it. Somewhere around here. Anyway, we'll just, we'll start from here. That wonderful stuff. So set your alarm clock and play your cones. Now, let's see if I can finish this off. It went so well. Do you think we can do it, folks? Do you think you can do it? And that was this week. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear it. What happened? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, close. Oh man. Oh, I'll just <laughs> <I'll, laughs> everybody's I'll, faces. Yeah. I'll have to play it back. Yeah, I'll have to play it back because uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. What had happened was um, you were doing Rosanna's fun facts and you turned the volume down. Because the song kind of ended, so he kind of ended the song out nicely. Then you went to play the ending song, and there was no there was no sound. <laughs> and we like oh, and then you clicked out, and you and you went right, right off the show altogether. So you kept yourself off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not the first time it's happened. So many times it's been like I said, oh, we yeah. just we just accept it now. It is what it is. I was looking for that one. I laughed so hard when I found it. I thought, oh, man. Yeah. You were laughing pretty hard during it, too. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, right? I lost it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Kathy. Yeah, you got to have fun. That's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. You got to laugh. Yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so, Kathy, you're keeping busy with uh, planetary stuff. As they said, you were out tonight. Were you looking for uh, some uh, transits tonight, or was that? Uh, I just wanted to uh, try. I had a new filter, and I wanted to see how the filter, if what, if what difference, if any, it would make an IR cut filter. Okay, did it make any difference I, for you? Um, I'm thinking so. It's a little different because uh, I also took off the reducer. Okay. So, you know, I've got one that's sort of working out, and we'll see how it goes. I'll post it up anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then was, I'm going to try taking it off and putting the Barlow on too, so I can even get. You're gonna love that. Yeah, I thought so, but I couldn't find it the other day very well, and I don't. I think my um, finder scope or my was just off, so I okay. had trouble getting it settled in. So yeah. next time I'm going to put the Barlow on and see what I can do. That's pretty funny when you can't find your finder. Oh, it, <laughs> <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure a few people heard me. <laughs> yeah. So that's a capture you did in the background too, Kathy, right? That's one of my moon ones. Yeah, that's uh, I think that was one I did the other night, actually. Yes, it is. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, so. And that was just a single shot. That little, if anybody's looking for just a, an inexpensive camera to hook onto their telescope, that A6000, any of the Sony mirrorless, uh, the clarity is fabulous with them. You know, you can, it, it's great. I yeah. did download too um, to try out. Paul, you had, were talking the other night about decon, deconvolution software. Mm -hmm. there is, I found a plug-in for um, Photoshop. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that I thought, well, I'll give that a try, too. I like playing around with software. I've got time to do it now. So yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. I'd like to see it. Maybe you could yeah. like, send it to me. I will send you the link, the link. for it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how. You know, I haven't tried it yet. I haven't done anything with it, but that's on my list for this yeah. week of things to do. Yeah, but, but I, at least I'll, I'll just kind of look around at it. And, uh, if you wouldn't mind, that would be yeah. wonderful. That'd be awesome. Thanks. I'll send you the link, yeah. 
because it's worth a try. And it, as I say, it works as a plugin for yeah. you know, Photoshop. So, and it had some wavelet adjustments in it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so. you seem to be having too much fun with this, Kathy. I mean, really shouldn't be having this much fun. Too much fun. <laughs> Way too much fun, too early Way in the game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we're supposed to yeah. be going yeah. through frustration yeah. right now, right? So, yeah. Yeah. You know, way too much fun and way too late at nights. Yeah. Well, that's that's debatable. I mean, yeah, the, I don't think yeah. that's something that's too late. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the night parts are, you know, they're, they're fun, but... Uh, you it's can't go to bed until you've got a couple of pictures to look Absolutely. at. But, yeah. You know, that's yeah. the, and the pleasure now about the weather turning, you know, this time of year. Everybody's big sobby eyes and stuff. We're well, all excited. Means, We're all happy. Yeah. Yeah. I just want at seven o'clock and see yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and we can be back in by eight, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing. So if anybody it's has great. the blues out there, you know, the winter blues, it, this is a hobby to be in. Even if you go with binoculars, it's oh, yeah. your equipment cools yeah. down so fast. You cool down pretty fast, too. You got to make sure that you're warm. But oh, you, uh, get the, you get the pink cat heater things, and you just nuke them in the nuker, and you can sit there and cuddle up with one of those, and the rest go in with your computer. I'd probably get beat up if I wore one of them, probably. Oh. <laughs> probably, <laughs> right, and probably rightly so. <laughs> yeah, they are pink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big pink cat. Yeah, yeah okay. <clears throat> Yeah, probably not best. <laughs> well, Kathy, we want, to, we want to thank you for uh, joining I, our program. Um, you're staying on, of course. I but, love yeah. your program. It's, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. It's, well, it was great to have you on the week when we had you on to talk about software. Uh, and I love it. It's, it was great. Uh, we had so many questions that night on, on online. People just kept, oh, kept continuing asking questions. It was so a you, fun night. I enjoyed it. This was a fun night. I'm just going to stay in my little corner here. You, you do. Fun. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> You're more than welcome to stay right in the corner. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we'd like I to have you back. I spent a lot of time in the corner when I was young. So I'm good on the <laughs> Well, we're, we're, we're going to bring you back on in a, in a couple of months or so, anyway, to bring to to have a review of what we've you know what oh, we covered awesome. because yep. people Anytime. you know people come in and they 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 come and go yep. on the page here, so yep. we want to okay. keep uh, keep you updated on it. So perfect. Okay, have we drawn a prize yet? Ready. Oh. I'm ready. Oh. Okay. Prize, I, I want to make mention to someone. Okay. About oh someone yes, that, yes, that we do. Another, okay? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Let's do the let's do the prize first. Yeah. Prize coming. Okay. Price coming. So this one's going to be for another one. Uh, actually, this one. How many have I got left? I got one, two, three. I got one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna do another book. We're gonna draw for uh, this book, Night Watch. Oh, that's a nice. Book. Great book. Yeah. This is uh this is probably the one book that everybody probably gets at the beginning. Why am I all yep. faded, down fuzzy there? What am I doing there? Get rid of that. Well, as you say, you're close to your focus, you have to pull awesome. it back. Okay. There, that's better. Okay. There you go. There. Hey, that's in focus. Okay. Ooh. All right. Um, so that's Nightwatch by, <laughs> Nightwatch by Terrence Dickinson. That's a revised fourth edition. The good thing I like about this, too, is that it lays flat. You can lay it right flat like that because it has a nice yeah. ring binder on it. And look what I opened it up to. A nice page full of charts. Yeah. So you go to these charts, and they, they actually light up nicely with a red flashlight. They do kind of glow in the dark really nice. Um, and then when you've come to these charts, I get the right spot there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, these charts actually reveal or get, or get revealed on the following pages. So they're more in depth as yes, you go through the book. But we actually, uh, it actually talks about the galaxy itself and we get into planets and uh, constellations. It's a really great beginner's book uh, to get started with in the hobby. I mean, these all are really beginner's books, but that one probably is one that most uh, astronomers get used to. And I and go back to a lot too for reference material. So, so that one's going to be drawn by Kathy. Okay, here it goes. Here it comes. Mm -hmm. Mix them all up good. Okay. Yep. Okay, you're mixing them all up good. Okay, ready? Uh, okay, right, got there one. Go. There you go. Got one. Okay, <laughs> pass it over. Thank you. Okay. There you go. Pass to you. Perfect. Okay, and the winner of the Night Watch book is Whitney Whitney McGuire. Hey, Congratulations, Whitney. Whitney. Awesome. A great book. I think Whitney's the first time winner on this, so that's awesome. Great. Okay. Uh, that one moves that out of the way. I'm going to sit quietly in my corner now. You can do what you like. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, we're going to introduce uh, Lisa, though. Um, oh, just let me. Before uh, we do that. Okay. No, yes. I'm sorry, Paul. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Lisa. <laughs> we'll just be one sec. I've, I've been wanting to do this since earlier, but uh, we haven't had time, so yeah. it's just important that we do. So. 
I just want to make mention, I'm going to share my screen just for a second. And I want to make mention of, whoop, oh, a sec here now. Just make sure I got this right because um, I should mention that uh, for those out there watching the program, we're, we're almost finished. All right. <laughs> yay. Forgot to say yay. yay. <laughs> we absolutely have to mention uh, Rosanna couldn't be with us tonight, the drop in. So, but I definitely want to mention um, <clears throat> uh, Rosanna's contribution to this show has been invaluable for, for us right from pretty much from day one. Wow. She has been the most committed contributor to her fun facts, and I, uh, I, I can't imagine us doing a show without them. And uh, Rosanna is also part of our, um, uh, in our uh, astronomy group, and uh, she's an avid astronomer. She's a musician. She's, a, she's many things, but she really does put together an absolutely wonderful uh, segment for us each week. All I have to do is throw it on the screen and read it. But she writes it, she does it all. And uh, and so we just have to absolutely say thank you to Rosanna for all of her contributions to the show. So thank you. 100 percent Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Rosanna. Yeah, it's uh, it wouldn't be the same program without it. It's it's uh, no, she no, become a, 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 a it's a complete staple and, of the show and now. Just to, and just to say that again. <laughs> So again, thank you very much for that. Sorry, uh, but I, I had to get that in there. Absolutely. And thank you for Peter Vrissima as well for contributing that uh, little yeah. jingle. Sound there. Like, yeah, yeah very, that very nice clip, sound clip. Yeah. Or, well, it's been amazing to have uh, to have her on the, uh, the program in that capacity because uh, it's just it gives us a topic every week to, to discuss. It's always interesting, Sue. So yeah, and I always look forward to it. Like I get yeah. them, and I just I just am an amazement with the information that yeah. she does and oh, she, how she well does, she put them together. She puts a lot of work into it for sure. Yeah, exactly. thank you, thank you so much. Another acknowledgement too we want to send out too is um, to NB Storm and Weather Center who does share our page quite often as well. Uh, Sean, Sean Connors has a huge following uh, through NB Storm and Weather Center, and when I'm live a lot, he'll share that. He'll share the show. He just shared it tonight. Uh, so all those who, people out there who do share the program uh, for whatever we're doing is so much. It's it's so helpful for us because I can't share it out any farther. Um, and Facebook wants you to pay to share all the time. Uh, so there's only so far I can go uh, on with with a free free ride basically. So the more that people share it, the more that we can get this information out there to more people. So we appreciate everybody who does that for sure, and and be Storm Weather Center of course for sure. And our number one fan who hasn't missed I think he's missed one show is my little brother Danny. So we have to say we have to say hats off to Danny. Hey Danny for catching us uh, every show, and I want to make sure that he sees this particular section because he'll be asking me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you mention me on the show? But he has been, he's uh, followed every single program since the beginning. So um, thank you, Danny, brother, for, for right tuning on. in. Yep, awesome. Okay, uh, we're going to go from there to talk to Lisa. Lisa has joined us now. <laughs> so Lisa uh, is actually a newer member of the hobby and joins us from New Jersey. Uh, where she has reached across the border to become a member of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, the uh, uh, Halifax chapter. Uh, Lisa is an avid night sky observer and has completed several RASC-sponsored courses. So Lisa also has her own Facebook page, which she calls Lisa's Lookup, uh, and where she posts regular information about the night sky. Uh, she's joined us on the program back in January of this year, and it was a pleasure to welcome her back again tonight. So, hello, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hello, how are you? Good. <laughs> no tonight. I'm really enjoying it. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the company that I'm in tonight. So. Oh, this thank is it, it, me too. Me too. Believe me. This is, it's been amazing for us. Uh, yeah. So, so tell us what you've been up to lately. So I guess since we last spoke, I uh, became co-editor of Nova Notes for RAS Halifax Center. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm co-editor with John McPhee okay. and, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. And we've put out uh, so far four editions and we'll be returning next year as well um, oh, to, to put out some more content. 
Um, I do want to thank Paul and the, and the whole team uh, of, of Astro Imaging tutorial people uh, for teaching me everything that 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 you guys do because I appreciate it so much. I'm I am not an astrophotographer. I I call myself a documenter, not a photographer. Um, so thank you for teaching me all those terms and and helping me uh, understand you know the beautiful work that the people in my center um, submit to me for for publication. So thank you. Thanks very much. Um, you know, you also mentioned Lisa's lookup. Yeah, so I started that page back in July, um, but those posts started a little earlier in the in the pandemic uh, when I was taking my birding spotting scope out and looking at the night sky, which is how I actually got started in astronomy back in 2019. Um, but I was doing these posts and sharing with people because a lot of my friends are, are birding. I come from a birding background. I've been doing that for 10 years, um, and my husband's been doing it for probably well over 20, 30 years. So um, I was sharing with our friends, hey, take your spotting scope out, take your binoculars. These are the things that you can see. You don't have to, you don't have to, you know, go to a crowded place uh, just to enjoy the night sky or, um, you know, I was trying to promote safe activities because I myself have, you know, health concerns, um, especially that were elevated during the pandemic. Um, the page just started, all those posts started to take off and, and people were suggesting you need to do a separate page because it was getting shared so much. Uh, at one point I found one of my, one of my posts was uh, posted in Australia and I, and I said, okay, this is insane. I can't believe that people are actually interested in what I have to say. So, um, you know, the aim of my page is, hey, come learn with me. Um, I try to post things that are easy targets try to post, um, you know, a lot of people are always asking me, well, what, you know, what's that bright thing? Is, what is that Jupiter? Um, so I try to promote what you can see mostly naked eye um, or, or with, with lower end optics, just, you know, what you have on hand. Um, I do post a, a monthly, you know, plan for your, for your targets um, that I tried to put up a few days before the first of the month. Yeah. Um, I also do a what's it Wednesday. So I try to teach a new concept each, each week on Wednesdays, um, a, a new term, if you will. And people tell me that they really appreciate these posts. So, uh, mm. you know, I work full time, but it, it's, it's passion that keeps me going on this. Yeah. Um, and two, what I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, yeah, no, uh, um, go ahead. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> okay, I was okay. typing. Sorry. In two weeks. Keep your ring. <laughs> yeah, where's the ding coming from? You know, yeah, I, just, I don't know where the pings are coming from. No. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm um, sorry about that. Um, in two oh. weeks, that's a, uh, okay. in two weeks I'll be presenting to RAS Halifax uh, at our monthly meeting. Uh, Going to be talking about the link between animal behavior and astronomical events. So marrying oh, my two wow. passions. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> that's that's and fascinating. Then, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, enjoying the research. It's, 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 you know, I've been reading about this topic for a long time because I just like connecting my two passions and, uh, and I've, I've been learning so much in preparation for this meeting. Um, so there's more to come on that. Um, and then I got, I've got new equipment this year. Um, Kathy, I don't have a cat, but I do have a really <laughs> We all need Kathy's cat. So I can help you all with that. I yeah. can help all of <clears> you. <throat> You know what? We should we should pass Kathy's cat around. That's yeah, what's been happening. <laughs> <laughs> but I could give you all your own cats. Yeah, I have cats, but they don't do what you do, what right. yours does. All mine do is eat. <laughs> <laughs> so what'd you get for me? Oh, yeah. So I mean, so so I got um, earlier in the year I got the Lunt Hydrogen Alpha Solar scope um it's a 50 millimeter oh uh, then i decided it was it was time for a grown-up telescope that i could handle on my own I, somebody did generous very generously gift me um an enormous dobsonian that is it, very hard for me to handle on my own so i did purchase um the celestron next star evolution 8 and now i'm oh, now i'm yeah. saving up for the planetary camera that's that's the next nice. toy that's yeah. that's next on the list the evolution so. is a beautiful scope <laughs> yeah good for you yeah in the planetary uh, camera, yeah. Well, here we go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Keep dig, digging in that wall. Yeah, the cat can take it. Uh, it's wonderful. You'll love this. Right there, right there. Yeah. 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 It's gonna take. It's gonna take a while to replenish the budget on that one, but yeah, it's always <laughs> I, have to. I have a question for you, Lisa. 
do you find it easier sure. to use your uh, evolution? I, and I don't mean the physical size of it, but the pointing and finding things than you do the Dobsonian? Or, or are you familiar with the sky enough yet? Or I am. I actually um, still haven't hooked up the GoTo, believe it or not. I'm still using manually um, just because I'm so new to the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to get much more acquainted with star hopping, but as far as maneuvering, I just put a tell rat on it recently and it's the best thing I did. It, it, it's a piece of cake. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, it's a great scope. Um, thanks to John Reed for, for recommending it. It's, it's an awesome scope. It really was the, the right purchase for me. Oh, perfect. Yeah. The tell rat yeah. is just, it, it's, it's a, in a world of its own. I mean, it's, it's such a, Oh, yeah. It's such a cheap plastic little piece. Like it, it looks like they should have designed, redesigned it like years ago. Make it metal or make it chrome or you know something really shiny or whatever. But no, it's like this ugly piece of plastic. Something you pick up at the dollar store. Yeah. But you know it, it has this, it has this unique uh, appearance, works. and it works. <laughs> and apparently, mm -hmm. the, who, yeah. uh, the person who sold it to Tell Red, I think, is anyway. They they said you can't change the design. Like continue to carry it, but you're not allowed to change the design. So that's why it's still plastic, apparently. But yeah but yeah it's, a, it's amazing and you can leave the light on it for 10 years and it never goes oh out. my gosh <laughs> never worry about leaving the light on yeah. yeah oh yeah those little red dot finders that you throw away anyway yeah will go through a battery in a night yeah and you can leave those tell rads on for virtually a week yeah. if they would and light up i'd have them all over my house <laughs> 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 never have to turn them off <laughs> Lisa, you're you're into a lot of stuff right now. You're really uh, and and your page is amazing. Like I I uh, I try to share your your Lisa's look up as well at the end of the month. It's it's so interesting to see your thoughts on it because I I put my own together I know, but then I go back to take a look at yours and see well, what what does she have on there? It's it's uh, <laughs> there's so much more that you're adding that. Uh, but it's uh it's been a you know it's been a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show, uh, and to be able to reach across the miles like this to see someone on that side that has been, you know so interested in the hobby as well at, you know, we get it, we get these borders across this and we don't really realize that everybody is in the same, the same boat here. Again, you know, I always say when you're looking up yep. at the moon, we're all looking at the same moon. So to me, it kind of pulls us all, all together and to come across the border like this with you, it's been, it's been awesome to have you on the show and we hope to have you back on again, because we want to keep, keep, uh, keep in tune with what's, what's happening in your life for sure with your astronomy journey. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I give you hats off to you, Chris, because you do all original content. I do a lot of sharing and some original content. Oh, you really do a great job. With it, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm stealing it from other You're places, though, too. <laughs> I just put it together. That's all. <laughs> um, yeah. <My> coaching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Mostly. I'm not I'm not uh, I've never taken any type of formal training in it. You know, it's just. It's because I like it, I guess. I, you know, whatever, when you like something, like Paul, like you know, astrophotography. When you like something, you you kind of learn a little bit about it, right? So, uh, but my yeah, I really do miss the outreach part of it. That's 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 my goal to get back yeah. to. Yeah, and this, I mean, this is helping. This is helping so much to bring to keep people together, keep people interested, and to, and to bring us together, even as a group. You know, who are all sharing the same hobby, and you know. Yeah. Um, there's nothing like an astronomer to, uh, as a fellow astronomer, you know, because they're just we, we stick together. It's, yeah. a, it's a great it's a great welcoming uh, hobby for sure. So, well, thank you, Lisa. Oh, we got to have you draw. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're gonna draw for ooh, let's draw for another one of John's books. Hey, look yeah. what I found! A yeah. second one. 110 things. Hey, 110 things again. So we're gonna draw for 110 things and. Okay. She's gonna reach all the way from New Jersey down and through. Look at that! Wow, what a reach. <laughs> Good stuff. Really, and I have uh, short arms. Too. Long arm. yeah. Wow, I don't think so. You did well. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so the winner of John's second book, uh, 110 Things to See with the Telescope, is going to be. And it's a great book. I got to say. It is. Erica Robin Doucette. Erica. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Hey, hey congratulations. congratulations. Well, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, well, we're winding. Come on, right through the show. Look at everybody with smiling faces, and <laughs> this is great. Thank you, Lisa, for for all you've done for us for the show, and for okay. and for all the shares that you do, because you've done an, uh, an amazing amount of shares for us as well. I see them all the time. I, I get I get tagged on them, so I know. <laughs> and uh, thank you for being part of our show. And I thank, thank you so you. much. Thanks, Lisa. 
Okay, uh, Mr. Raithby has joined us. Hey, Tom. Good evening, sir. Oh, you haven't got haven't got sound. You're muted. Oh, you're you're muted. Here's our blue bird. <laughs> oh, let's try that. There, that? Hey. there he is. <laughs> That's our oh blooper. My That's our blooper for tonight. My head off and I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, sir. How are you? Well, well, I'm doing great, thanks. I, and I, I, I'm watching along here, and, and it looks like you guys are having a great evening. Oh, it's been it's been amazing. <laughs> it's like a it's like a it's like a telethon kind of thing, you know. It's like a Jerry yeah. Lewis telethon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I see you're gonna have no trouble here. finding bloopers for next year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be pulling these for a year right out of the show. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right, so so I'm going to introduce Tom here for us, for everybody out there in our audience. Uh, Tom is an avid hiker and adventurer, um, and a member of our local St. John Astronomy Club as well. During Tom's many outings, he has also mastered the skill of capturing amazing time-lapse photography. Uh, Tom mm -hmm. joined us on back in the program back in July of this year to teach us how to capture time lapses of the night sky and other uh, things as well. And it's a pleasure to invite him back on the show. Welcome, Tom. Well, thank you very much. I, I'm just thrilled to be invited back. I've, I've got a bit of an echo. I'm not sure if that's me or... Uh, you have a big room. <laughs> yeah, well, you're in a big room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can see behind me, I'm actually at, at the fire hall here. I, uh, I, you know, I'm currently homeless. Oh, that's where you're living? <laughs> the thing, really. no, hey. the okay. price of wood is coming down. Okay. This, this I, is now, I know it is. It is. It this is, is now just I'm, become I'm a telethon. Really I'm really happy that the price of wood is coming down. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so if, if you didn't know already, we've been in a, a travel trailer now for about a year and a half. Wow. And, uh, and the summers are nice. The winters are more challenging. So, so, uh, so but, but as things turn out, we, we've got to start now. So we've actually got concrete poured. So, uh, right. so if things go well, there's going to be, uh, you know, an insulated wall around me sometime this winter. So, <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so you know what? I, I got the uh, the message from you, Chris. You know, you were kind of asking, you know, what kind of stuff's going on, and uh, you know, uh, tongue in cheek, uh, you know, I, I'm doing some planetary imaging, but it seems to be all Earth. Yes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but you do it well. You do it well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I haven't I haven't been out at night very much uh, with the camera, at least. Uh, not lately, so uh, I'm up. Uh, you know, my, my normal schedule is actually I, I'm normally in bed like a while ago. Okay. Uh, I get up at, at five thirty every morning, and oh. uh, and I have to say I, you know, I follow uh, the Astronomy by the Bay stuff on Facebook all the time, and yeah, uh, yeah. and, and I, I look forward to seeing the uh, you know the the planet images, uh, the night sky stuff, and uh, you know I get up at, at five thirty in the morning. I look up and. Uh, you know, I, I'm thrilled. Uh, you know, I'm up there. I'm looking at Orion, and I'm thinking, "That's that's great." You know, I you know I, I like those reminders. It's nice. Thank you, Tom, uh, and you're a great sharer too. I've I've watched how many times you've shared our our, our posts. So I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, yeah you, you've been uh, you've been amazing. Uh, did you catch the aurora recently, or no? You weren't. Uh, no, uh, no, yeah. no, I did not. Yeah, I did not. So we uh, just and, and very recently, really, we we just poured the concrete. Uh, you know, I've got an excavator in the yard, and and uh, so I'm. Uh, so do we As need to run up moving dirt from one place in the yard to another place in the yard fairly do need, frequently? Do we need to run a telethon for you, maybe Tom? Or like we could run we could do this again <laughs> yeah, next week. <laughs> next week we'll just do another show next week and we'll have a little dollar sign up at the corner. We'll just click and donate. <laughs> yeah, we know. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's, no, things are things are, are going well. I'm uh, you know, I'm very optimistic that uh, the things will, you know, kind of go in a different direction. So right now, you know, I mean, as you might guess, my hands are going to be kind of full for a little bit, but uh, yeah. uh, some of the things that I've been, uh, you know, busy with, uh, books about space. Uh, I don't know if you, you guys are probably familiar with Andy Weir, uh, you know, an author. Uh, the Martian was, uh, you know, a yeah. fantastic book. Uh, mm -hmm. The movie, I, I've watched the movie. I, I love the landscapes. I love the music. Listen to the soundtrack in the car. Uh, he's got another book out. If you haven't read it, Hail Mary. Okay. Uh, Fantastic! Really? What a great imagination the guy's got. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it just, I, uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm on my third go through it now. I only just got it early in the summer, and I, I'm, you know, I'm reading it again. It's uh, what a fantastic story. Awesome, so. awesome. So, uh, so, so no, I, uh, you know, lots of, uh, lots of other stuff, you know, that uh, that's been going on. Uh, you know, I love the stuff that I see on your page. You know, Thank lots you. of folks, you know, send stuff into you. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, the sun, the planets, the moons, you know. 
yeah. amazing stuff. Kathy, great to see you. Uh, I haven't seen you before. We haven't spoken yet. Love your photos. Fantastic. It's been Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you. No, oh, Tom, you've been a, you've been a, you were an amazing, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were an amazing contributor to the show when you come on the time and we'd like to get you back again for for uh, another talk on time lapse because the the, yeah. the presentation you had was just yeah. awesome and i again, i'm really interested in time oh yeah lapse, it's so yeah. It, this guy yeah. does it this guy yeah. does it the best he's he's the master yeah, I, it's on my bucket list of very yeah. short things to do yeah, yeah well I, i've been looking at some of the stuff that I, i've seen posted and i've got some more ideas things that i i think would make an interesting time lapse so well, so yes, yeah, so I'm hopeful that we'll have something to talk about soon. Please, you get them done and bring come back on the show anytime. We'd love to have you back Absolutely. on the show. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We we yeah, do. Sounds great. We sounds so appreciate great. your support so much, and and thanks for being up so late uh, tonight. We're gonna let you get to get some sleep because you you've been going for a long time today <laughs> for sure. So sorry to bring you on so late, but we do appreciate oh, you coming no, on. Oh no, fantastic, fantastic! I've enjoyed the show. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna get you to do a draw here for us. Keep those time lapses coming. So let's get your oh, hand out there. Yeah, reach, reach in the top or I can reach up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'd say reach in the top. Reach in the top. Way up the top. The fire is not as low as you go. Oh, you got it. Look, you got it. There you go. See? You had it. There we go. All right. We're going to draw for uh, a couple of books right now. Uh, the two books I'm going to draw for are another one of John's books called 50 Animals That Have Been to Space. Uh, that's a great book for kids and a great Christmas book, actually, if you want to throw that in the... Uh, well, you can't, maybe you can't shove it in the stocking, but you could wrap it beside it for sure. <laughs> and uh, this one called Exploring the Night Sky, which is going to go with it. So it's another it's a companion book. Oh, um, nice. Nice so, package. Yeah, a nice little package of books there. Um, great for beginners in astronomy and great for children as well. And uh, adults like to read it too. Who doesn't want to know what animals went to space? I mean, really. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know butterflies went, but anyway. Uh, okay, so let's do the, the number that we drew out here for or Tom, uh, Tom's name that he drew out is Nikita Mitchell. Hey, Nikita. Hey, Nikita. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. So, Tom, how far, uh, when, do you, when do you expect to have your uh, house warming so we can come down and set up and stuff? Oh, I'm, I'm so looking forward to having a warm house, really. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come. You know, this, it, you know, it's like the night sky. It, it waits for you. So, you know, this yeah, time yeah, lapse will wait yeah, for you, well, too. Yeah. For you us, be, you know, right now, the race is to get us weather tight. So that, uh, that's, well, you should yeah, be doing a time. I hope you're doing a time lapse of it. Well, we've talked <laughs> about it, but but I'm not sure. This one, this would be like a, you know, like a, a long time lapse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of batteries. <laughs> a lot of batteries, yeah, yeah. at least. Did you say you had your foundation in? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, it's, it's interesting. So uh, you know, I for us, we we built we built the last house, but we contracted out you know different things. Like we contracted out all the concrete last time and the plumbing, and uh, and this time, well, we we've done all the concrete work ourselves. Uh, oh, so wow. it was it was a lot to learn, like how to put a foundation in, and and it's been it's been a great adventure. Uh, continues to be a great adventure. So, uh, so anyway, so we're, we're hoping to, to do that. Although I got to tell you, at this point, I am so looking forward. Once that concrete floor is poured, we can put walls up. Oh, and absolutely. You know, yeah. Yeah. Stuff will go. You know, it, it'll be, it, it'll feel like I've got a lot more done each day. You know, to see that progress. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Once you sit back and, yeah. and uh, you know, once you've looked back at your, at your accomplishments, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Then, then you won't be able to find you again. You'll be back out to the lake setting up cameras. That's and right. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All that work for what, right? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tom, for joining yeah. us. It's been a pleasure, and thank you for coming, joining us on the program. We oh, really well, thank it. you. Thank you. You guys have a great night. Thank you so Good much. Bye-bye okay. yeah. bye now. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so we're going to bring on uh, our last guest. Um, is Paul Arthurs is coming on the show, so we'll wait for him to join in. Uh, all set. I'll just type here a little message to him, and and uh, I guess once we bring him on here, we'll we'll go over the last couple of uh, bloopers that we have. <laughs> did did silence? <laughs> there he is. Hey. Hey, son. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Not bad. Good. How's it going? I think I'm doing just swell. Nice awesome. to see all you guys. Uh, I always tell Chris, 
Uh, I uh, watched the show uh, for Paul and Mike. Uh, so really, really happy to meet you guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, put a, a face to a name. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, this is uh, this is Mike Arthurs. Mike is uh, Paul Arthurs. I'm sorry, Paul. Yes. Well, shall, we, shall we go with Paul or shall we go with I, 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 he, whatever? Whatever you he, like. He, well, when he grew up with me, it was Mike. When I was given there the money go. to go to the store, it was Mike, so I can call him Mike. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, it's Paul Michael Arthurs. And, there we uh, go. There we go. So uh, our final guest this evening is someone that has had an active role in the program uh, in the background and has probably uh, most probably aren't aware of actually my son Michael. Michael has uh, been legally blind actually since birth, but has found his niche with computers one Christmas morning at the age of five. Um, he's uh, faced overwhelming obstacles, including being a kidney transplant recipient, and actually right now is on dialysis waiting for a kidney as well. Um, he's uh, risen, though, to become a respected employee of a fast-growing technology firm in Winnipeg. Uh, Michael is the one who has set up the server for us uh, to allow us to simulcast to, to uh, both YouTube and Facebook. Uh, he's also now my go-to guru guy for anything related to our show issues and technology. We've talked a lot about the program. We talked a lot about Astronomy by the Bay. Uh, he's still waiting for his cut. <laughs> <laughs> so am I, though. So <laughs> are we all are, Chris. Yeah. We have all the line. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm very proud to welcome uh, him on the program today. Welcome, hey, Mike. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So. Uh, yes. Yes. But, uh, it's been a long time. I've uh, wanted to come on. Uh, I've asked many times. You've never said yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here it goes. Get in the show. Okay, so thank you very much for coming by. <laughs> uh, this is no, it's uh, it, you know pleasure to be on. It's so cool. I've been watching uh, the the whole time, Chris, uh, the whole show. Uh, I know That's usually I, I say that I uh, have been watching, but I, I usually don't. Yeah. Uh, but yes, this time watch the whole show. It's so neat to see uh, just everybody connecting uh, through the show from from every you know part of the Maritimes and across the, you know New Jersey and I don't know. It's just it's just so cool to see uh, people connecting and, and uh, sharing you know a love of of a hobby like this. Um, I, I think it's it, you know COVID times. Uh, it, it really, uh, you know, brought so many people apart, but yet it, it did things like this. Uh, I don't know, just so neat to see everybody come together and, and share in this hobby and this passion that you guys have. Um, I'm, I know Chris has probably told the story uh, to Paul and Mike, but maybe not to everybody, but, but his first telescope uh, that we bought off of uh, eBay um, <laughs> years ago. Um, so excited to receive this this telescope. What, what was it, Chris? Like a... Uh, it was a uh, yeah, it was an astro astro design yeah whatever like just yeah. long name like what the okay let's <laughs> let's try it <laughs> at, at Walmart uh, astro design or something written on it I don't know it a, yeah, yeah see yeah. the stars see the stars yeah yeah, yeah it was it was uh, we were very excited uh, you know it was it was so uh, going to be so great uh, when it came um, you know. It, Despite uh, how terrible uh, the scope was, I think uh, it still ignited um, and, and kept that passion going uh, that you had uh, and sharing uh, the view through that that really crappy scope. But then yeah. uh, you know so you soon upgraded to a real scope, and uh, yeah. I don't know. It's just it's so cool to see. You don't see that type of passion uh, much uh, these days. You don't see that type of passion to share uh, something with with others and. Um, you know, it's very, it's, it's always been inspiring, Chris, to see you do that, uh, not just through Astronomy by the Bay, but just through the, you know, viewings that you have at the, at the beach, uh, the viewings that you had in our backyard uh, with all that light pollution, <laughs> um, you know, just trying to share it with everybody on the street. Just, it was just really cool. And uh, the, it's morphed into this. And like I said, watching the last two and a half hours um, to see everybody connect through all of this. It's just really cool. Thanks so much, Mike. Appreciate that. No, it's uh, well, you know, we, we couldn't connect if it wasn't for your for your efforts. So. Your efforts. That's, yeah. that's, that's <laughs> well, this wouldn't be happening. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, I, I hope they keep. I was watching those bloopers. It was really. I didn't see those. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, when you guys were first trying this, so. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, <laughs> we had our problems at the first. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and, and we still do. You know, we yeah. still once in a while go off air, but you know, it's, it's it, now it's just a natural part of the show. It is what it is when it's live. Yeah. It, we don't do. You know, we are amateurs doing a live program 
in a maritime kitchen party kind of atmosphere. So yeah. that's how we yeah. see it now. It used to bother me endlessly. Like I would, I'd lose sleep over it continuously. Oh, I know. I'd, yeah. Especially when they were off. I, I, like I wouldn't even go back and look at an episode because I was so embarrassed at how it turned out. Right? <laughs> yeah, you deleted it off YouTube. But yeah, take, take, go, yeah. That one didn't really happen. Yeah, but it, it became it became the pat. You know, path now where I mean I'm looking at six screens in front of me, but I'm I'm just looking at everybody right here, you know, and this is the part that that I'm trying to focus on. But it was you know it was amazing to be able to keep this going, um, you know, with COVID. Uh, since yeah. we we dropped all our personal outreach, in person outreach, we were like, well, okay, what are we going to do? Like, how are we going to keep keep people involved in the hobby and keep them interested? In it? And I was, you know, I, I going along with the Facebook page, but. This part here, it's video that brings people together too, right? It's it's uh, it's the capture of, of people's reactions. I I can post all I want, but I can't see how people are reacting to posts, and I can't see how passionate they are about it until we have an evening like this where we're blessed by having so many people coming in and, and wishing us well, you know, for moving ahead and what we've done in the past. So this part of it really meant a lot to me to be able to keep this part of the of the program alive and. Uh, I'm really thankful well, for think, everybody on this. But. Just think of how many more people that you have, you all have been able to reach because of this, yeah. because of COVID, and I hate to say it, but you've been able to reach so many more people and you see everybody sending more, more and more pictures in yeah. and, you know, everybody's pictures improving. Like that's got to, that says a lot about you guys. Oh, like we we just decided to have fun with it. We thought, okay, you know, Paul's in Hampton, Mike's in the same kind of area where I am, but we still don't get to see each other very often. And this is how we get to meet. And, uh, you know, we when we're at star parties, we're the same as we are here. We have laughs and we you know, we chat and it's all, you know, we're usually the last three people to go to bed at night because it's, you know, we're, we're watching Orion come up in the morning sky. It's just, yeah. it's, it, and we it, to share that that passion from all of the, these two guys as well. I couldn't do this without these two guys. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a team here. Um, yeah. capturing so you this guys right, so. have, you guys have reached so many people you know? yeah i mean even just tonight uh yeah. you know you just have a look at youtube uh this uh this the broadcast uh the last couple hours uh, the most uh shared and, and uh, liked uh video from from on the youtube side of your uh, sunday night astronomy uh series so um you know it's just it can continue to grow um i know chris you and i talk about uh, big plans to, to you know, make uh, more of this, to have more content to share with everybody on YouTube and uh, in, a, in an easier way to, that's, you know, consumable in, in smaller chunks yeah. um, and just, you know, make it uh, more impactful and, and easier to share. So uh, I know it's going to continue growing um, and then, you know, combine that with all the work that, yeah, Mike and Paul do and uh, just everybody that does in the community to, to keep sharing those photos and post on Chris's page of Strongly by the Bay and just, I don't know, just so cool to see it keep growing. Yeah, it's it's been awesome. I, I'm, I'm totally blown away by the reaction by everybody on this. Like, it's just, it's very humbling for me, you know, to be able to, to get out and, and get to get to this kind of an audience. I never thought it would ever happen, you know. I never and, thought but, we'd see a hundred shows. <laughs> Not after the first few. It was like, okay, I figured we'd is... be cut off about six. <laughs> yeah, this isn't going to work. Let's go do something else. <laughs> yeah. So now it's been it's been awesome to, to offer this, and I wanted to thank everybody that's been online with us all all evening tonight. Like this is we're into two and a half hours now. This is <laughs> but it's been it's been so much fun. I've enjoyed every moment. Of it. I, I can't believe it's been on that long, but. Uh, I want to thank you, Mike, for for everything you've done for us uh, to keep us to keep us live here and to to make sure that our program gets out to, to everybody um, as smoothly as it has on all this time. And I, I, I hope I can keep helping out. So well, we'll we'll we're gonna we're gonna count on that. So don't be sending me a bill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Every time we're turning around, I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be talking to him. He can figure yeah, it out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's what it was. And you have. You've yeah. really taken care of us. Oh, absolutely. You know, from behind the scenes. And it's, yeah. How do we say thank you? And <laughs> we can't say thank you enough for everything you've done. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah. No, I, I'm happy to help. And, and hopefully, like I said, uh, you know, Chris and I talk about all these plans. And, and hopefully, we can dedicate some time to doing it and, and just making it uh, grow faster. So, yeah, yeah, it's very cool. We'll continue on. 
Okay, well, you know something in that? Uh, I think we're going to close out tonight because we're into 10.35, so I think that's enough time for people to be penalized, suffer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for letting me sit in my little corner here. Thank, I thank was you so much, there. Kathy. <laughs> it's been, you're just like a little mouse in the corner there, and you know, right. or a little cat in the corner that's been, you know. A little okay. cat in the corner, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Bad cat. <laughs> So we're going to close out tonight, folks, uh, by saying the thank you once again for everybody out here for your continued support. Oh, hang on. we got to make a draw. we got one more draw. Hey, yeah, i got to do hey. a draw. What, what's going on hey. here? I'm going to draw. Hey. Our final I'm draw. sure you saved the best prize for last for me to draw this. So Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He's looking up. He's looking around. What have I got? <laughs> here's that 12-inch dub. Here, okay. here's, my, here's my wallet. Here's the wallet. <laughs> Actually, I'm just going to give you another one-year subscription to uh, Sky News. So that's a, that's a handy gift, I think, if you don't. Yeah, okay. so. so reach your hand out there, Mike. Reach your hand out there, Mike. There we go. Okay, reach away. And, and, okay. All right. All right. And our final gift for this evening uh, for one-year subscription to Sky News Magazine is going to go to Tammy Tilly. Hey. Hey, Tammy. Hey. Awesome. So oh, everybody... And- Oh, just before, and I know it's late, and I should have done a little earlier, but I'll do it now. I'm going to put a plug in for the series that I'm doing with Sky News, and it's called Subs and Stars, and it's myself and uh, Landry Brenges uh, from, uh, she's the editor uh, for Sky News, and what we're doing is we're putting on um, a beginner's um, workshop on how to process the data that they're gathering from that same robotic telescope that you fear uh, are um, uh, talked about earlier. Hmm. And um, and anyway, so it's really cool. You can go onto the Sky News website and you can download the data for free if you want to play around with it and that kind of stuff. Uh, what we want people to do is play around with it and then actually send it in and then uh, and it's being judged each month with all the entries that we get from that data. But it's uh, it's been fun, and we've gone through two two shows already, and uh, and we've got another six more to do. And it's uh, each one we bring new data from uh, from the robotic telescope that's down in California. Absolutely wonderful stuff to work with, and the Lendry is just a treat to work with. And uh, and we cover everything, uh, and we're talking a little bit about mostly about pics in sight, but we're covering topics with uh, Photoshop and some uh, some GIMP stuff coming up on the next one. So we, anyway, it's it's a lot of fun. So uh, it's on YouTube, and just look up the uh, subs and stars. And if you want to look at back at the first two episodes, they're there for you to download and peruse. And if you want to learn something about Pix Insight, we've covered everything from starting uh, how to put your desk together to processing right to a finished picture. So it's all in there. They're about an hour and a half long. So there's something in there for for everybody, hopefully. So awesome. that's my plug. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to comment, first of all, too, to everybody that's been out there. I haven't been able to have the time to comment back to people who have been asking questions or whatever, so I will be going back through both YouTube and, and Facebook, reviewing the comments, reviewing the questions, and I will answer as many as I can possibly answer. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, Chris. Hmm? Uh, one of the most frequent things people are asking, where's the Bino Bud section? Uh, you know, they, like, <laughs> we, better get, we better get two of those next week is all I can yeah. say. <laughs> Up to you. <laughs> yeah, no, we're we'll be we'll be keeping Bino Bud definitely in the in the program uh, going forward. Um, I wanted to remind everybody that I'll, I'll put a post up uh, for our Global Star Party on Tuesday night uh, with Explore Scientific, and yeah. I'll try to get as close as I can to the time that we'll be on online with him. So, okay, so then in closing tonight, uh, special thanks again to your continued support, everybody out there. We've really enjoyed it. Uh, next week's show. Um, it's going to be uh, Astro Show 101, uh, which will be uh, covered uh, covering de- demystifying astrophotography software. How would that be? So Paul's going to do us a talk on astrophotography software and how complex it looks, but how he can actually get through it. So that's our show 101 next week. I remember, too, that we, we do love getting your photos, so send them into Sunday Night Astronomy Show at gmail.com or snaz at uh, astronomybythebay.ca you can send it in there too hey, that's working now hey all yes. thanks to Mike <laughs> thanks Mike uh, and we'll, we'll include them on your broadcast so uh, we're also looking for topics for future shows so if you have anything that you'd like us to talk about in a future episode please let us know and please let your friends and family know too that we are here every Sunday night not this long but next Sunday night will be a normal show uh, to help educate there it, there it is thank you Vanna yeah, thank you, Vanna. <laughs> to help educate and entertain you uh, 
so for now then from uh, Paul and Kathy and Mike and Mike, uh, Paul, sorry, and myself, <laughs> <laughs> stay safe, everybody out there. We wish you all clear skies and please uh, remember to uh, uh, keep uh, an eye out for yourself and your, and your friends and family around. And remember to, as we like to say, keep your scopes, point it up. Point it up. Have a great week, everybody. Everybody's bobblehead. next week for show 101 good night everybody thank you for joining us thank you everybody good night